Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to CZW Proving Grounds. It's your truly Dan Cowie, and I'm being accompanied today by Jake Black and Rob Naylor here on commentary, and we're set for our opening contest, Alice Colon versus Rich Swan. Yes, Rich Swan, a young, dynamic, high flyer who's a big fan of product placement, as we see. Yeah, those wins are great. Oh, he gets one of the referee Drew Blood. He thoroughly enjoys it. He was getting a bunch of crumbs dead center in the ring. People have to wrestle in there. There's a lot of grease in that ring. And now Alex Colon is at a big disadvantage because of all that extra crispy delicious. Oh, no! And he's making it rain chicken into the fans. There are starving people in Africa. Come on, man. There's starving people all over the world. <laughs> you, you raise a good point. That's my grandmother used to tell me in the 80s. I think that really pissed off the swan here. Also, the crowd, who is not a big fan of seeing over 7,000 calories kick right their way. Hey, Philadelphia is a hungry city. We love our food here. Food that's bad for your body, obviously. Look at our audience. Their shapes, all shapes and sizes in most ways. It's just one shape here. He hasn't even dropped the chicken wing yet. Deep oh. fried assistant uppercut by Rich Swan. Whoa! What a thought! Chicken wing assistant offense right here. Flurry of activity fans. Oh, wait. Oh, my God. Look at this. <laughs> and the crowd is loving all the action. All the crispy chicken action here in CCW. But let's be honest here. Let's take this a little bit more seriously, guys. You guys get around oh. much and no getting around when you're dealing with Alex Cologne, who just used his elbow like a bullet to put down Rich Swan. Big running elbow. He don't give one damn about seven herbs and spices right now. He's coming to fight. Yeah, but taking this match all seriously, Alex Colon is one pissed off man. He had his best of the best ten spot stolen from him pretty much, at least in his eyes. And now he wants some redemption here in the combat zone. He's going to start with Rich Schwann, another man. Oh, big drop kick. Another man who was unable to qualify for best of the best 10. And Rich Swan has been doing very well for himself recently. Five days ago on Wired, he won a match and he's back on a roll. His singles career is blossoming right now. Both of these guys are the definition of young, hungry athletes. Even though they discard chicken, they are very hungry. Oh, and there's a poke in the eye. And they are also very much improved. These guys get better every month. Yes, they do. And Rich Swan, like a house of fire going in, but Alex Cologne blocks it. Send Rich Swan over. Rich Swan now is going to take to the skies. Oh! Big kick to the face! But he gets kicked down by the Latino roughneck, Alex Cologne, who right now has to capitalize on what he just did to Swan. Cover here one, and only a two count. That awesome defensive maneuver almost garnered him a three count, a victory right here in our opening match here in CZW's Proving Ground. Fans get behind, perhaps both athletes in particular, probably Rich Swan. Hey, sometimes the best defense is a good offense. That's what my dates do at the end of the night. But right now in the ring, Alex Colon is on fire, and Rich Swan is being burnt by him. Alex Colon is looking very good here at Proving Grounds. Very good. Let's bump that up to excellent, my friend. Well, I'm not sure about excellent just yet because Alex Colon has a long way to go to make his name in the combat zone. And Rich Swan now going with the cover here. One oh. reversal. Another two count. <laughs> oh, kick to the face. Alex Cole. Calling the shot. Alex Cole been known for those kicks, but Rich Swan known for the quick offense here in the cover. One, two, only a two count. Well scouted. Slept the eardrum. Grazing kick and another slap. Back and forth action, guys. Rich Swan has got to learn these kicks and strikes from his recent tour of Japan. And it's oh, oh, that oh. recent tour of Japan was, oh, very well done. But, but Alex Cologne didn't need a tour of Japan to show how powerful he is. But right now we're at a stalemate because both men have just had their brains scrambled by the other one's fists and legs. Absolutely. At the point of exhaustion, both these guys letting it all hang out, giving everything they can here in the opener. And just listen to this crowd. Oh man, they're oh, getting a little too close for me, guys. There you go, you're gonna run away. I am gonna run away. Can you blame me? Oh. No! Oh, look at where oh, left! The service seems like a step off the ring apron! Alex Cologne! Rich Swan! Rich Swan, you're coming back with those elbows. Stay yeah. wild down here, guys! Soul butt! Less an occasion there. They oh! Away. What the hell is this? No! Oh my god! 
but I was still able to fight out of it. Keeps the face. That's close. Oh! Oh! No! Oh my! That is not good. Rich one is down and he is not moving. Dragon seems like all the most unforgiving parts of the ring apron. And this should be an easy count out win for Alice Cologne because Rich One soul is on the floor and is not getting up anytime soon. I don't care how much heart he has. Rich One is not looking good here right now. But, but this crowd is rallying behind Rich Swan. Mr. Standing 450 somehow able to crawl into the ring. Breaking the count, Rich Swan using every fiber of his being, every bit of fight in his body to get back into that ring after that sickening ball. Kick out after two, and all the hours in the dojo in Japan has paid off to Rich Swan. If this was a few months ago, I think Rich Swan would be oh! down and out. But he might be down and out now, because Alex Colon just walled him right in the face. Oh, kick to the face! 360 to the max is Alex Colon. These guys are both stepping up huge right now. But this has got to be Swan's last burst of energy. We saw what happened with that dragon Second. suplex on the apron. Right. He's got to put Colon down now if he wants to win this one. Oh, oh my god! Oh. Oh. Cologne is now motionless, and Rich Swan is calling this in. One, two, 450. Took a lot out of him. Cover one, two. What? Oh, what the hell? Oh, he almost had him. Alex Cologne almost just countered. Well, he did counter, but he almost used that counter to put down Rich Swan standing 450. This is one of the greatest opening matches in CCW history. Well, oh, oh, oh. into the gun deal. Oh, he got him. Like it or not, Cologne is victorious here at Proving Grounds. The time, 5 minutes and 50 seconds, your winner, Alex Cologne! Hey, tonight we learned Rich Swan loves two things, fried chicken and he- what? What the hell? I think that's Ruckus' music. Yeah, but what, what does Ruckus have to do with Rich Swan and Alex Cologne? I know a few, mo a few months back on Wired TV, we saw Robbie Marino trying to hype Ruckus up. And it looked like he did a good job because look who's together right now. Robbie Marino has gotten back in the ear of Ruckus and Chrissy Rivera off for three of hers with him too. I think we've gone back in time here in CZW right now. This looks like a new reinvigorated ruckus, and right now Rick Swan and Alex Cologne are in Robbie Marino and Ruckus's ring. Well, he's got the crowd support for the first time in ages. You know, it's been years since I've been here, and the truth is, this building has always had a special place in my heart. This company has always had a special place in my heart. And you people really have always had a special place in my heart. I sat right there as a 14 year old kid and watched wrestle with my best friend, my Bernie Trinacid. And I swore I'd never give up my dream. And I swore I'd never give up on new people. And the truth is, new people never give up on us. And I haven't come back. I haven't become a fan of CCW again. And Alex, Richie, that match, new man, new heart. You guys make me a fan 
Wrestling is usually about two things. Often it's to resolve a personal feud. Other times it's just to prove who is the number one, who is the better man. Now Ty Hagen, you and I don't have any beef. You and I have even called ourselves friends at one stage. And that's why this is about who is number one. That's why it's about who is the better man. I came all the way from Australia to prove that I am the best at what I do. I am, in my country, the best of the best. And I couldn't even get a shot at best of the best. But I'm not complaining. And Ty, I know that you haven't even won a match in a year. You got a billion shots to be in best of the best. And that's fine. I don't care about that. All I care about is our match tonight. I care about the fact that you, quite possibly, are the most dangerous man in that locker room. You see, a wild animal, when backed into the corner, has two choices. Either lay down and die, or get his back up and fight. Fight for everything he's got. Now Ty, I will be bringing everything that I've got. Because I want to prove that I'm number one. And I expect you to do the same.
the beautifulest smile and the most banging body, Mia Yim, and he has something to prove tonight. Can he beat the newcomer from down under, Ryan Eagles? And Ryan Eagles has been quite impressive since debuting here in the combat zone. He hasn't had much victories, but he has gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the top talent here in the combat zone. Yeah, Ryan Eagles has indeed uh, fared a little better than Ty Hagen here of late. And a little better, you say? He's actually went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mark Briscoe and Sammy Callahan on separate occasions. Ty, Ty Hagen, I'm sorry, was injured by Akuma and didn't even show up the best of the best to watch the greatest man on the planet, Adam Cole, his former best friend, win it all. What a terrible human being. Did you see the ball he endured one, two count only? He took one of the sickest uh, top row power bombs I've ever seen from Grant Akuma. It's impressive he's here today. Alright, he's got a lot of heart and he's got a lot of talent, but now he's got to channel that in the ring. He's been falling behind while his best friend goes nothing but up, up, up. Uh, you have enough time to fall on a radical later on tonight in the main event when he takes on AR Fox. But right now, let's get to the action in the ring. And Ryan Eagles taking Ty Higgins down to the mat. Now, Ryan Eagles is something that CZW fans haven't really been able to figure out yet. They really don't know if they should like him or hate him or what he's going to do in the ring. I've been nothing but impressed with Ryan Eagles thus far. He has a lot of aggression and he's got uh, sound mat fundamentals. Yes, this devilish human being from down under isn't going to let anyone intimidate him, especially not Ty Hagen. Look at him go toe to toe with Hagen right now. Hagen might not want to trade with this guy. No, definitely not. Eagles has got the size advantage on this one. Hagen's going to have to use his speed if he wants to actually beat the young man known as Ryan Eagles. That's that fight you were talking about, though. Ty Hagen has a lot of heart. He will fight a man much bigger than him. Oh, he will. He gets lured into these situations that make him look bad like that. Look at that, right across the chest. I'll tell you what, though, all the shots Hagen's just been taking, he has not gone down. You got some separation there off the ropes. Lands on his feet. Oh, there's a nice right hand giving the lights of Ty Hagen. And once again, Ty Hagen only down to a knee, didn't get fully down to the mat. And Ty Hagen showing the fight he has, going right after Ryan Eagles. Oh, he's trying to hook in that bear attack, but Eagles uses his power to his advantage there to escape it. Eagles definitely had that move scouted and knew what to do, and now they're having a stare down. Eagles going back into the ring, just a little faster off the road, but Ty Hagen right behind him, meeting him with that horn. Oh, oh, using his brains. Down smart Ty Hagen, whose mind is always on the junior heavyweight champion out of full, and right now he gets planted face first in that with an elbow in the back of his skull. Human assisted elbow drop. I've never seen anything quite like that. Beautifully executed by uh, Ryan Eagles, who's now wondering what is it going to take for me to put this man away for good. The Eagles only getting a two count, now bringing Hagen back up to his feet, and Hagen now, that chop just fired him up. He's Bradshaw and Stan Hansen asked this guy. He just brings it. He's got a cool oh. accent. And he's got much more vicious chops. That was brutal. What does this accent have anything to do with this? What is your accent? What is that? Philly? Yeah, it's Philly. Oh, but that was more rougher than Philly. When you get hit by a man like Ryan Eagles, there you have no choice but to go. Yeah! Huge spine buster cover here. One, two, but only a two count. And once again, Ty Hagen showing that heart and able to kick out after two. The resiliency of Ty Hagen is something you got to respect. But right now, he's got to get focused on the bigger man. And he might do it right here. He's trying to lock him on in a half and half. Yeah, the old Tequila Sunrise Suplex, which you have seen him plant people with before. He hit that into a loop. But Eagles still has able to dominate much of this matchup here at Proving Grounds as Hagen goes to the second row. Oh, and Ryan Eagles telegrams a huge forearm to the back of the head. Send it Hagen down. Cover here. One, two. Oh, two. So close two. to a three count. The lights were dim, but they're not out yet. That's what you have to respect about Ty Hagen. Oh, and this is exactly where you don't want to be with Ryan Eagles down with your back on the mat. Just hammering those forearms. Just Banging Ty Higgins' head off the back of that. Back set off of that. It's brutalizing him here. But I rough house offense in this quasi. But I will say, frustration is beginning to set in in Ryan Eagles. You can see in his eyes right now. He can't figure out how to put Ty Higgins down. Oh my god. Oh, that's gonna help. That's gonna help. And when you make a man like Ryan Eagles frustrated, all you're doing is unleashing a sleeping giant. That's a cliche, but it works in this situation. Look at the welts that he's leaving behind on the chest of Ty Hagen. Well, Ty Hagen's gonna have something else to cry about after this match, the way it's going. 
House of Fire coming in and crushing Hagen in the corner. And Ryan Eagles almost is having his way with Hagen now. But oh, wait, nice! Couldn't get it in. He's trying to go for that submission maneuver. He's going for the bear attack and he can completely He's lock got it. it. He's got it now. It's cinched in. Eagles was fading, but he used his power to get out of that one. Stuck in the back elbow. Catching him. Hagen now. DDT dropping him down. Go for the cover here. One, two, two. But he didn't hook the leg. He he wasted too much time rolling Eagles over. He didn't feel he had enough time to actually hook the leg there. Ty Hagen, flurry of offense, doing everything he can to pick up a big win, which he direly needs. That's what he's got to do against the man. He's got to do the little match message. Machine gun chops, and now he's just getting some shotgun chops from uh, Ryan Eagles. Just bringing another hard elbow in the face. Hey, Ryan Eagles is like a tank. Let's not dull him down by calling him a machine gun. Oh my god, now off the ropes. Hagen somehow getting off the ropes. Snap power slam! One, two, oh, kick out two. after two. Fantastic contest we have going on right now at CZW Proving Grounds. Both men looking to prove their worth here to the combat zone as both men have not had the most successful record in recent weeks here in CZW. Hey, for Hagen, it's been a lot of oh, overhead suplex by Ryan Eagles planting Ty Hagen in the mat. And this is it, guys. You spoke too soon there, Jake. Hagen able to get that shoulder up. But what does Eagles have playing here now? He is focused and intense in that corner right now. Running mobby kick to the side of the face of Ty Hagen. He didn't go down, but is still staggered. Yo, misses with the second attempt. Well, I thought we were going to see a cover there. Shiny Wizard! This could be it! One, two, oh, two count two. once again. Two and a half. That was so awesome. And now we see Ty Hagen frustrated, not sure what to do to put the bigger man down. He's got to reach down deep inside himself and bust something out. And now Hagen looking intense in that corner, coming out like a house of fire, trying to hook him for that crucifix. The crucifix. Oh, oh. oh Saido suplex drops him down on his head and neck. Off the ropes. Oh. Oh. And that has got to do it right there. Crushing the skull. One, two, three. Kick out at the very last second. Ty Hagen now rolling out, seeking some surcease on the outside of the ring. That shocked me. That legitimately shocked me right there. I thought Eagles had the match one with that. Yeah, especially since Ty Hagen's been nothing but a loser recently. He's a smart loser then, because that was exactly the right thing he should have done. Get out of the ring, you can't win a match being a pickball outside of the ring. Now there it is, a big forearm. Perhaps he uh, baited him with that. He wanted him? Baited him. This is a family show as Ty Hagen goes high with a drop kick, sending down Ryan Eagle. He's pulling down the knee pad. Setting up for his flying knee attack. This has won a match in the past. He got he all out. Do it now. Trying to go for the cover, but might take two on one, two, three. Wow. Impressive. If Hagen wanted to prove why he still should get another shot at the Junior Heavyweight Championship that his former best friend holds, I'll tell you what, that was the best example why he deserves it. You see it right there, he said he's coming for the man, but right now he put down Ryan Eagles and he should be very proud of himself there, but it's still a long road until he gets to meet the greatest man on the planet once again. Akuma, this is your last chance. If you fuck this up, it is over. We have Grisham tonight, and you beat him twice before. Let's make it a third time, or you're not gonna like what happens. Do you hear me? You better kill him! Cage of death marks the day that a thorn started to grow in my side. That thorn goes by the name Akuma. You see, 
A lot of people might say that I had victory at best of the best, but to me, that doesn't count. There were other elements involved, other people involved, and most importantly, I didn't advance and win best of the best. So Akuma, like I said before, we would meet again, and I promised you that it would be nothing short of hell. And tonight, that promise comes tenfold in the form of Jonathan Gresham. Best of the best 10. We saw what fuck couldn't be done. We saw Akuma lose for the first time since returning to the combat zone. And since that night, it has all fallen apart for Kimberly's warrior. And she is not happy about that. And that's all thanks to Jonathan Gresham. Yo, quit dwelling on the negative there, buddy. Because a cage of death in a six-way match, we saw Akuma put down Jonathan Gresham. In January, on January 7th, we saw Akuma put down Jonathan Gresham. What happened at best of the best was luck finally being on the side of Jonathan Gresham when he was in the ring with Akuma. I wouldn't call it luck, because Jonathan Gresham has been on a roll lately here in the combat zone. Jonathan Gresham deserves all the success. I see him as our working man's hero, and right now, we're seeing an athletic contest. Look at this action guy! Akuma with a misstep! Well, he was thrown off a little. He didn't expect Gresham to be able to counter that with the cartwheel. Misstep aside, this is fast and furious here. Both of these athletes really uh, bringing it. And look at the determination on Jonathan Gresham's face. He's gained so much confidence over the last several months when he qualified for Best of the Best. Yes, Best of the Best wasn't his night, but you can always get him another time. As we said, these guys have a storied rivalry here in CZW. I really enjoy watching them wrestle, to be honest with you. They're very good opponents for each other. They bring out the best in each other when you get down to it, but only one man can walk out the winner here tonight, and both of these men really need that win. Gresham has to prove that one pinfall he has over Kimberly's warrior Akuma was not a fluke. It's a very good point. Jake Black is now Akuma goes toward the corner. What we, what we saw on Wired TV earlier this week, if Akuma loses one more time, Kimberly might not be at his side anymore here in CZW. And she's really the reason why Akuma is here in Combat Zone Wrestling. Nice right evasion. Big into Gary right here. Sorry to interrupt. All this action going on right now. Oh, look at the height. Cover here, one, two, only a two count. And even soaring through the sky, looking enough to put down Jonathan Gresham. Akuma really uh, showing a lot of speed and agility in this match. And there's that striking that we know him for. Akuma is the master of the strikes, while Jonathan Gresham may be the master of the mat in CCW, bringing his opponent down and stretching his tendons and maybe even breaking his bones. Speaking of broken bones and lost wind, Akuma right now has the advantage in that department. I'll tell you what, those last few losses here under Akuma's belt might have just reinvigorated him enough to please Kimberly, because right now he's looking very fine here at Proving Grounds. Speaking of looking fine, let's not downplay Kimberly. Oh, what a sent on. Wow. Full body weight all over Jonathan Gresham. Just driving the air out of him. Kick out on one. Wow. He's got a lot of fight, too. It's almost a theme right now for tonight, Proving Grounds. Oh, kick the quadricep. 
you know, Oklahoma is the true warrior, but at the same time, you could say the same for Jonathan Gresham. He's been here one year now, and every single time he steps in that ring, you see him going a little bit harder, a little bit faster, and not backing down from anybody. That's why he is the working man's hero here in the combat zone. He works for everything he's got, and he deserves every success he has. Oh, hilarious, but he has a much better song than the working man's hero. Goes from the cover, does John Gresham, two count only, had that elbow firmly placed across the face of Grant Akuma, trying to keep him down. Yeah, what that also does is that actually takes his ear away from where the referee is counting, so Akuma can't actually keep up with the count. Oh, now, he's back. now he's just going to work on that leg. Vicious kick from Akuma, but Gresham able to get back up and takes Akuma down with a huge clothesline, and now a back elbow. Yeah, you know what? If you go after Gresham's leg, it's patched up there. But if you attack his leg, he's not going to be able to get the same base on his submission moves when he locks him in. Or any of his... Or moves like that, even! High flying moves! I don't know, you might say it wasn't that effective, but it looked effective to me. Oh, beautiful! <laughs> Tossing German suplex! Released again, perhaps no, he holds on to a nice bridge! But, oh, only a two And a great flurry there, he threw him like a javelin the first time, and the second time he went for the pin, it didn't work out for him, but as you can see there, it took a lot out of Kimberly's warrior. Jonathan Kreshko, though, it's definitely a little powerhouse. Look at Kimberly on the outside. Oh, man. He's just pissed off. Yeah, the beautiful, the beautiful face has a bitter beer face right now, but let's hope things turn around for her warrior. And Akuma now able to get that waist lock on, but Gresham trying to fight out of it, and he does. Heading off the rope, Akuma with the low kick. Oh, and a kick to the chin, but Gresham not going down. And Akuma, like a house of fire, come in. Oh, no! Go to knee! Oh! Oh! Go to death! Because look at how he just landed! Gresham is down and out, and it's back in Kimberly's Warriors' favor. Right on his head, and right on his head again. Cover here, one. Got to be it. What? Oh. Once again, Gresham able to kick out. Gresham looking fantastic here. How did he kick out of that offense? Who knows? He looks out of it. Pure instinct, fellas. That's what happened there. Akuma now. Look at that beautiful mood song. Oh, he got all that. Let fire in his face. Two. And a kick out after two again. And look at Kimberly. It's now, now it's wearing thin. Akuma's unsuccessfulness, I don't know if that's a word, is starting to wear thin on Kimberly on the outside. Well, look at Idiot Dictionary. Kimberly right now has had Akuma pussy whip, started my language there, since they began here, and right now he is failing her. Rolls through, there it is, rolling treadle. He couldn't get all the impression able to kick. Right. Look at this offense. No, back and forth, trading reversals and cradles. Two. This game of technique right here might be top here by Kuma, but no. Fresh him now. Oh, Damn, nice. One, Got him. Two, three. Oh, no. Stay away. Kimberly's pissed off. And she's going back in that ring. Six minutes and seven seconds. Abusive relationship that may have just come to an end. I'm not sure which Akuma should be more embarrassed about. Losing to Jonathan Gresham or losing a, a fist fight to Kimberly now. Well, despite being from Philly, Dan, I think you should know you're not allowed to hit a woman. But big props right now for Jonathan Gresham, who has now been Akuma twice now and is definitely earning his strike as a CZW junior heavyweight contender. Awesome win for Jonathan Gressel. Onward and upward he goes here in CZW.
We got the Fighting Irishman now here at Proving Grounds, Jake Chris, who pretty much earned his CZW contract last month at Best of the Best 10 with his wowing um, offense and performance. He was excited. But tonight he's feeling perhaps even. Yeah, but, but, but tonight he's got to deal with a man who has proved himself in CCW, former junior heavyweight champion, Brian McBride. This prick takes me back to the Irish Civil War, fellas. I knew that was coming. Maybe they'll share a Guinness. Wait, was there actually an Irish Civil War? You know what? I, uh, I'm not going to get anywhere right now, but there's an arm drag his wrist. I'm pretty sure there's not. History is not my strong suit. Here we go. He rolls through here. Jake Chris now taking, rolling through with another. Uh, yeah, you're not going to be able to keep up with it calling it move by move. But, but what we have right here is both these men not wanting to make a mistake early because both men have such a high flying, high impact offense. But they hit one big move, this match will be over quickly. All right, there we go. Shane Wrestling got an inside headlock takeover. Both men now looking to earn their contender spot for the Junior Heavyweight Championship. That seems to be the theme here in the first half of yeah. CZW Proving Grounds right now. And it's going to chap the Irish ass of Ryan McBry a little bit that a newcomer like Jake Chris was in Best of the Best when he's proved himself in the past and he didn't make Best of the Best on April 9th. It's just the way the cards have fallen, unfortunately. And right now, Jake Chris is looking very good here that against Ryan McBride. Got that cravat sinked in pretty deeply. He won't uh, let him extricate the hole either. Oh, that's smart. Step on the back of the knee. Nice uh, way to get out of that hole now. McBride now pushing Jake Chris against the top row. All right, guys, who would you actually give the speed advantage to in a match like this? Both these men are known for their tag teams the last year or so, and in the case of Jay Chris, much longer, but both men have mainly been a tag action in the last 12 months. Honestly, I think it's totally 50-50 with these two wrestlers. I mean, they're both definitely on the upsides of their career, have really been stepping up more and more of late. I agree with Rob here because, oh, look at that! But if a step up like that is just what Jay Chris needed. Oh, so big right there! the outside and the crowd is eating this up here at CZW Proving Grounds and Ryan McBride is eating himself some concrete here at the Asylum Arena. That's some black warrior like distance with that crazy missile to the outside. And Chris going upstairs and oh. taking McBride down and we have a cover here. One, two, and three. Oh. Ball away net breaker back close to getting the win for Jay Chris here. Jake Griff, who went toe to toe with Sammy Callahan and AR Fox, two of the top competitors in CZW at Best to Best, right now has to focus on Ryan McBride. He may have earned the respect of everyone in CZW, but he has to gain a victory first before he has most of these people's respect, to be honest with you. And Jake Chris now is setting up Ryan McBride, slamming him down. What does he have planned here? Beautiful springboard moonsault off the second turnbuckle two count only. But only a two count. Jake Chris looking impressive, but he's been unable to keep Ryan McBride down for more than a count of two. For now that's been the case, but it has been mostly been Chris during this match. McBride now dead! <laughs> Big knee to the chin! I'm gonna dim this lights completely right there! Two count only. What I like about the other Jake is that he always goes right at Ryan McBride after he hits a high impact move. When he did that missile toe to the outside, he only stopped and posed for a second crowd of his accomplishment. He got McBride back in the ring as quick as possible. The other Jake, what are they call him? Garrison Chris or something? That's what I would prefer, buddy. Oh, oh William Chris. Chris landing on his feet. Oh, nice. But that time landing on the knee of Ryan McBride, and we have a cover here. Tilt the world backbreaker only gets a one count. Jake Chris has so much fight left in him right and now. And McBride is setting up for the hit back. Cover here, one, two, and a kick out after two, and McBride has got to be frustrated. Months and months of frustration for Ryan McBride, unable to get to the finals of the CZW Tag Team Title Tournament, and unable to get the best of the best ten, and right now unable to keep Jake Chris down for a count of three. And now we have this newcomer in the ring with him, who does the Irish act also, trying to prove that he's better than him. The Irish act? The, the right Irish there. got extinct over 30 years ago. I'm Irish. I'm still sitting here. Well, let's see how long that lasts. One, two, kick out after two. Leave the Molly Maguires out of this. Now Ryan McBride slowly getting to his feet. 
I think Ryan is probably going to be taking a little too long here right now. We got to harken back to the early time in this country when businesses would hang up a sign that said no Irish. Oh my god. But what we have right here is Ryan McBride trying to ascend to the sky to put down Jake Chris. I think he's probably taking way too long. He is, but Chris has hit him with some big moves. Yeah. Chris is staring at the, on the bottom there. Oh! Whoa! Oh, Chris! He's got him trapped on Heartbreaker. Yeah, but look at this. Chris right now rolling all his weight on his top of his shoulders. That's going to cost him. Triangle Kenoki battles out of it. Powering out into the corner. Oh, that was buckle. What a buckle call by Slate. Or excuse me, too many Ryan. By the cry. But Jake Chris falling in us. Gets the cat. Huge cross body. Cover one, two. Oh, the kick out two. after two. Two. Now Jake, Jake Chris just got momentum on his side right now. He's a nice series of maneuvers. He's rolling in the deep, but he's feeling the effects of taking all those risks. Jake Chris now trying to pull Ryan and Fry back up to his feet. Look of determination on his face with that series of forearms. Nick Fry now. Oh, gets caught right in the yak. Oh, no. Oh, oh he got it. That's it. One. Two and oh! Two. two count only. That has got to frustrate McBride now. McBride has put out many men in the combat zone with that maneuver, but Jake Chris able to kick out of it. You know what? He, that slipping death valley driver didn't put Chris down, but he can't dwell on it. You got to stay on a man like Jake Chris, who is bound and determined to prove himself in CZW. Jake, Jake Chris, Chris now. Super kick and a second. And a cover, one, two, oh, but only a two kick. Went right for that cover, smart wrestling. Like I said, Chris does not waste any time after he hits a big offensive move. No wasted motion, except perhaps here. Fans now getting behind Jake Chris. Can he ride on the wave of their momentum here at the Asylum Arena, proving grounds? Chris pulling McBride back up to a vertical base, but McBride now takes Chris down. He's got that Irish clover leaf on. He's got a turn with it. He's got a lock. Dead center in the ring. The agony that Chris must be in. He's getting to the ropes as quick as possible, which is what he had to do right there as his knee joints are wrenched and his back is just twisted in half. Unbelievable ring presence there shown by Jake Chris. Chris is taking no chances at wasting time by getting immediately to that bottom rope. But look at McBride taking too long, and that is gonna cost him this match. It seems like McBride is trying to change the momentum of this match a little too late in the bout. McBride has Chris backed up into that corner, whipping him into the other corner. Now McBride coming in like a house of fire. Oh, Chris! Major. Tiger suplex! Oh, oh, he got all that beautiful fridge! Oh. Once again, only a two count. So close, and Jake Chris now, he's shown such frustration, but he can't let it affect him. You can't let the fact that your opponent is tough get under your skin. It's going to happen at CZW. Now McBride going for that Irish Cloverleaf again. Once you don't succeed, try, try again. Better ring placement on this one, guys. Chris has nowhere to go. In fact, McBride is pulling him away from the Oh, my God. Whoa. Whoa. And he's got that, that triangle choke now applied. He's got him back in the triangle choke. This move has put so many men down in the world of sports. And right now, but look at, whoa, look at that. What a counter. Into that Irish Clover Leaf. Unbelievable counter wrestling we're seeing here today. Two men who are known for the aerial offense have brought him back to the mat, trying to make the other man tap out. Kind of ironic, but it's what you have to do if you want to succeed in that ring. And the rope is just out of reach for Chris. As he's trying to throw over, but McBride right sits down hard. Pull it right away. And listen to the crowd behind Ryan McBride. Oh, wait a second. Chris somehow fighting out of it. And once again, goes again. Up. that triangle choke. And look at the pressure. Look at the pressure on McBride. Look at the power, actually. Well, through. Two. Three. Three. Got him. And right there, that's a ring veteran, Ryan McBride. The time, nine minutes and nine seconds. Blue Ryan McBride 
act of self-preservation going through that triangle choke and getting a win, but Jake Chris deserves all the credit in the world for his awesome performance that, right there. That was just experience on Ryan McBride's part that won that match. If it was any other person, I think Chris would have won that. Hell yeah, both these men are earning this little ovation they're getting from the crowd. They put their heart and souls in the ring. And I'll tell you what, if people are on the fence about bringing Jake Chris again, I think Jake Chris has firmly proven himself and proven why he now has a CZW contract. But seriously, the freaking Irish, people still, people still celebrate that kind of stuff? Yeah, they do. It's a fun day in March. You should experience it once. Tonight is the night, Drake. Me and you, one-on-one, -on -one, finally, first time ever in Combat Zone Wrestling. This dog collar right here is going to keep us chained together. No more running, Drake. Me and you tonight, the time has come. Step up, Drake, because I'm going to put you down. Oh, 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 yeah! Scotty Vortex is trying! 
stomped on his head by the golden boy, Drake Younger, like a diamond with the light shining down on him. Drake Younger stands tall. And Drake Younger going back to work on Scotty Vortex. Battling precariously close to us here. A little too close to my cover. Scotty Vortex. Oh, head is down. Back. Oh, wait a minute. Drake Younger. The chain. Oh, that was table. The chain drags Drake Younger out. And I don't think Younger had that planned whatsoever as both men are down in front of us. And this is not good. Get out of here in front of us right now. Mark Forward by Scotty Vortex. Drake returns in time. And look at the golden boy now, treating Scotty Vortex like his whipping boy. That's right, Drake. Yeah, get some water. Clean yourself up a little. Uh oh, bro. Oh, my paper is now wet. Now my pants are wet. But that was going to happen anyway when Drake Younger becomes victorious tonight. Wow. Things I never needed to hear in volume three. Now, Drake Younger has Scotty Vortex. I was oh! That's things I never needed to see volume three. Yes, driving him into that turn post. So vortex so, what? It's a ring post. You know what I said. Now, oh, Drake Younger now putting that foot up, using the leverage from oh, man, using leverage to try to drive the opponent into that steel ring post, even. Oh, rake of the eye. Hey, we know how dangerous these type of matches can be. The great Roddy Piper was lost in oh. hearing from a match like this, and Scotty Vortex is about to join him. Scotty Vortex being driven into the ring post and is now down on the far side of the building. And Drake Young right now standing tall like a ring post as he drives Scotty Vortex's head into the side of the ring. And now Drake Younger is going to have some fun with some plunder. Scotty Vortex may have been lacerated on that sickening thud of his head. I hope so. Post. And Drake Younger bringing in some furniture into the square circle and using one of those chairs as a weapon and driving it into the rib cage of Scotty Vortex. Now you see those chairs are there for weapons. They're not for sitting in. Those are a CCW favorite. Favorite. Drake Younger has perfected the art of using a steel chair as a weapon. But that's okay to use as a weapon? Oh yeah. Because Drake Younger pulled them out, right? Drake Younger pulled anything out, I'd love to see it. He's that awesome. Oh my god, again. Oh my god, again, goes Vortex into those solid steel barricades. Drake Younger now. Oh, Drake Younger thing whipped right in to the steel guardrail front first. At least you know the name of those things. Oh, again, no. Now this match is getting fun, in my opinion. You turn coat. What do you have against Drake Younger? Hey, since I've been here, Drake Younger has been, well, not really endearing himself to myself or the CZW audience. And the blood is flowing on the forehead of the golden boy. He doesn't bleed gold. We don't need to see this. We got plasma square right now. We also got some blood from uh, Scotty Vortex there. And you saw, if you've been watching CZWrestling.com and seeing our YouTube videos, Scotty Vortex pretty much summed it up very in a very short video that he is not going to stop until he gets his full revenge on Drake Younger. And it's clear that what Drake Younger did to him has led to him drinking excessively. But right now, look at the violence displayed by Scotty Vortex. Well, Scotty Vortex has Drake Younger bloodied and battered down on the outside of the Asylum Arena. This is a dog fight Michael Vick would love. Really? I know, it's dated, but what's not dated is what Scotty Vortex is doing right now. He's got a bucket of something. He's got an Easter... It looks like an Easter basket. Yeah, it looks like an Easter basket full of something to me. I was going to say a pail. But Drake Young has got a face full of fists by the Corner of Death 9 champion. A pail of punishment, perhaps. You know what is in that pail as of yet. We're about to find out right about now. I see some silver in there. No! Yep, that's that's what I think. It, wait, no, wait, no, it's flat. Scotty Vortex, the shower himself, in glass. This is how bad he wants to put down the golden boy. This is terrible. This is great. This is disgusting. Looking at Drake Younger's smile gone from his face. Oh no! Tucker Rana! Oh, look at oh, oh no, oh no! Golden boy! Don't 
just power bombs Scotty Vortex into shards of glass when he himself did not have enough energy. Oh, but he's back up. Look at the golden boy. Can't keep a good man down. Drake Younger now going the way. Oh, yeah. oh my god. Holy crap. Oh my god. I was like to turn away right now. <laughs> this is beautiful. This is as gruesome as it gets, fans. The Picasso of ultraviolence, Drake Younger, is dominating his former best friend, Scotty Vortex. Right back into the glass. Some of the glass flying out at us here on the outside. He appears to be going for a figure four, if that's any indication. And he's going for a figure four, ultraviolence. Oh, yeah. Driving him, well, pretty much Scotty Vortex's bottom side into the glass while trying to make him submit with this figure four. Hey, and making sure Vortex won't be able to hit any of his high-flying impact offense because he's taking out the knees right now. Vortex, doing no pain, trying to amp himself, amp himself up, smashing himself in the face. Oh, now look at the ropes to the left of Grant Drake Younger. Uh, why are you complaining about that when we've seen glass and chairs and tall collar and garbage? I think the rope for leverage is perfectly fine, perfectly acceptable when it to Vortex, Fuji style throw with the glass by Scotty Vortex. Vortex able to get some glass and using it to get it out of that hold, but now being met by an atomic drop. And you know what? It's going to take a lot more than some glass to put down Scotty Vortex. You know, he is a tournament of death champion. And you know what? I see why Drake Younger didn't want this match. He didn't want to have to dish out this much punishment to his former best friend. What? The high flying action, but oh, being met by a chain to the face. And being met with applause that can't be measured from that old kids' court, kids' court death bowl meter is Drake Younger, showered with cheers. What does Drake Younger have planned as he's, it looks like he's hog tied. Hog tied and oh, yeah. the glass. Just shredding his back to ribbons. Jesus Christ. Oh, I love this. Look at the Golden Boy, he's having fun. You guys are speechless. I'm lightheaded, man. This is disgusting. I, I honestly feel bad for Scotty Vortex. I think everyone on Earth should feel bad for him. Look what he has to live with. Look at the piece of glass like shoved into his body right now. But look at this, he was able to counter it right there. A lot of heart by Scotty Vortex, but he gets caught by the Golden Boy. Oh, the chain Shane assistant. Oh, yeah! Death Valley driver assisted by the golf chain, sending Scotty Vortex down, and Younger going for a cover. One, two. Let's see, he's playing a true cocky once again, and Scotty Vortex able to kick out. Scotty Vortex is back, just ripped to shreds, as now his throat is ripped out by that steel chain by Drake Younger, the golden boy. Now, Thank you for calling him the golden boy when describing it. He deserves that at all times. On oh, the blood of Drake is dripping down on his former best friend. Man, they used to be blood brothers. They should be used to that because Drake Young is being fired up from right now by Vortex, though. Vortex, though, is all caught up in that chain. Over the top! He's right in front of us! Oh, but Vortex able to hold the oh, Look at Drake Young! Choking the life out of Scotty Vortex. I think it's more of the damage being done here is that shoulder. Look at it. Look at the shoulder. Look at the blood pouring out of his head on his former pad. Jesus Christ. The choking him out and trying to dislocate the shoulder. And Drake Younger. Oh. Just taking it to his best friend. If both these men are spilling blood for their cause, but Drake Younger's cause right now is stronger than Vortex's. I guess Drake Younger's cause is over the top. But Drake Younger's going to prove that he is the top dog here in CZW. Drake Younger putting his own body on the line to injure Scotty Vortex here as they both go careening into those pile of glass. Younger setting up those steel chairs, and I know it's not for sitting. Wait a second. Oh, no. This is, this is a little bit different. What the hell is he doing, guys? Oh, but this can't end well. This contraption is going to spe spell the end of Scotty Vortex. Oh, my God, no. This is not good. He has the legs of the chairs up. No! In oh, yeah. 
Scotty Wartek has not been able to gain any momentum recently against Drake Younger. The last half of this match thus far has been all the Golden Boy. Do you really have to say it with a southern accent, too? I'm sorry, it's contagious. Both chairs now. Uh, he Demonically placed on the mat. Oh. Jesus. There was no give to those chairs. Look, they're barely, they barely even bent with the impact. But Scotty Moore takes his spine short and bend on that one. And now the golden boy is descending up to the top rope. No. Scotty Moore dead. Oh. oh my God. Over here, one, two, and yes! Yeah. You cannot keep the golden boy down. His spine may now be compacted, courtesy of that contraption, but he will not stay down. He's gonna prove he was the top dog in the Naptown Dragons. These guys are just putting it on the line right here. Proving ground, and now Scotty Vortex insanely setting off the furniture in the middle of the combat zone ring. Bodies and souls are being left in the ring tonight in this dog collar match. Proving ground is turned into a goddamn battle trap right here. Oh no, this is what he's setting up. Oh no, here we go. Oh man. Wrapping that chain around his fist. Why is Vortex so vindictive? What does he have against Drake Younger? What does he have against Drake Younger? Have we oh! oh! Busting that cut open even more with the chain. Oh wait, now Drake Younger with the chain. And he takes a huge shot to Scotty Vortex's forehead. Oh, oh! Getting a little taste of his opponent before he puts him down. I see what the Golden Boy's plan is here. Look at the skin flap hanging over the eye of Drake Younger. And fourth and oh, my God! Great the chair. Cover one, two. Take that power slam. Raises the chair there. Raises the chair, but ends up in the glass, which is just as bad and perhaps worse. The blood loss both these men have gone through tonight. I don't even think anyone watching can comprehend what they're fighting for what they believe in. Whoa! Glass chair strains and bloodshed right here. Scotty Vortex slamming Younger down with authority. Going to the second rope. Going out to the third rope. And what does he have playing as he takes to the sky? Both knees! Right, to, the to the chest cavity. And it's caving in. Oh, look. Younger now. It looks like Younger's having trouble. Oh, my God. Drake Younger, the blood is pouring out of his head. Internal injuries, perhaps, right there. Younger's having some trouble breathing right now. Cover one, two. Oh! Look at the fight of the gold boy. Drake Younger. Fighting through a caved in chest, it looks like. Blood line. Drake Younger in just dire shape right now. Bleeding buckets right now. Yeah, this is not looking good for Drake Younger right now. Holding his chest and sternum region. Just an absolute effing bloody mess right now. But look at these warriors. They're going to the ultraviolet limit here in this dog father match. Scotty Vortex now. Oh, Jesus Christ. They're coming over here again. Why? What are they doing now? They're out in front of us. What does Scotty Vortex have in mind? And he's got to be careful. Scotty he's Vortex. still... He is still changing the right young What the fuck? Oh, Jesus! Right on the neck! Oh, look at the blood! The blood is pouring oh, all over the floor! Like a goddamn faucet to the floor! Trey Younger, say what you want about the Golden Boy's attitude, but never, ever, 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 ever again question his heart! Oh no, Vortex now going to the second rope, but Trey Younger now. Trying to pull that cha chain indefinitely. Oh. oh! Right on the twig and berries. <laughs> Scraping the skin as Scotty Vortex falls in the mat. And the Golden Boy isn't going to let a ton of blood loss stop him here tonight at Proving Ground as he proves he was the dominant Nacktown Dragon all along. How much more e like his equilibrium has just got to be completely gone right now. He's lost so much blood. Yeah, Drake Younger is really busy out there. He has no clue where he is. And what the hell is he doing now? He's going under the ring and he's pulling out the table. 
How are both these men even still standing after this? Oh, uh, how the hell do you have the strength to pull that table out with all the blood I see pulled in front of him? This is absolutely, it's because he's the golden boy and he has more fight and determination than everyone, anyone will ever understand because the golden boy always stands tall. We knew this would be a war, but in our wildest dreams, I didn't really think these two would take it this far. This has been the most out of control dog collar match in the history of professional wrestling. Let me say that right now because I mean it. Drake Younger now setting the table up, and I'm sure it's not for dinner tonight, but Scotty Vortex pulling. Oh, he's going to die on the soul and body of Scotty Vortex. The soul and body. What is he, a damn undertaker now? All right, settle down. But what we have right now. here is a very dangerous, intense situation for both these ultra-violent athletes. We'll fit on that table. Picks him up. It's the other side. It's over. That's got to be it. And Trake, if Trake has enough energy, he does. The cover of it's done. Come on, Scotty. Please kick out Scotty. One. What? One. After one. Scotty Vortex shocking the combat zone, able to kick out of that after going head first through that table. Look at Scotty Vortex. No matter what here, he's not gonna let Drake, Drake Younger bring him down. Scotty Vortex says, F off, I'm not going down. Well, he's not going down. And he continues to say fall. Oh! I'm pretty sure that's not what he's saying. Scotty Vortex, no. oh, Drake Younger catches him. Double underhook. Tiger driver in the glass. One, two, and third. <laughs> Once again, Scotty Vortex hell bent on revenge. He is not going to go down to Drake Younger here tonight at Proving Ground from the Asylum Arena. This is awesome. Going for Drake's landing. I'm saying Drake Younger not able to get the Drake landing hooked on. Oh, oh look at him. Come on, a kick. And a second. Just swelling the face off. And he opened up another cut. It looks like from the gold boy with those. Ducks the clothesline. Oh, no. Drake's landing into the glass. No. One. What? Once again, able to kick out. How? How? How is Scotty Vortex doing this? How is Scotty Vortex just playing so much courage? That is heart, that is determination, and that is a man hell-bent on revenge. He is not going to let Frank Younger embarrass him here in Philadelphia anymore. Tonight, Scotty Vortex is proving he was never second fiddle in the Naftown Dragons. Oh, I read, and no matter what kind of match it is, that's going to slow any man down. Both men now, you see how Drake Younger's even moving. The effects of this ultra-violent dog collar match are just shown on the movements of their bodies. Neither man will ever be the same again after this match. Short jab to the face. Drake Younger now perhaps if he can get his equilibrium gonna try to climb to that top rope. What does Drake Younger have planned here? As he's perched on the second. Wait a second, Scotty Ford takes up out of the chair. Meets him with a face, fist to the face. And now what does Scotty Vortex have planned here? Oh no, no, no. This is never gonna end well. What Sc the hell is going on? Scotty guys? Vortex, I think, is setting up for the Blue Moon Dragon, guys. No. This is Both not going up top. This is not looking good for the Golden this Boy. Right. No. Yeah. Blue Moon Dragon. Oh my God. Cover one. What? No. Yeah. What? Golden Boy rises. Golden Boy rides, and he eats glass, ready to kick ass. What Judgment Day is stepping in. What in the hell is it going to take to win this match, guys? These guys are going to fuck a lot here at Ruby Browns. Drake Younger has risen seven days before Judgment Day to prove he is better than all men. Brown is absolutely stunned by the action we have seen in the ring as these two former best friends go toe to toe in a dog collar match and neither man showing that they want to be embarrassed or lose here tonight. Oh no! Oh! And the switcher sweep! Cover it! Two kicks! 
tell only how is Straight Younger conscious with all the blood loss and how is Scotty Vortex continuing to fight? Because these men are not human. No, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you for mercy and then using a low blow. Oh, no. He's got that steel chair. No. That's Straight Land. Straight's landing on the chair. This is not. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh my god. Two, three. What a match! The time, 21 minutes and 33 seconds. The winner, the Golden Boy, Frank The crowd is giving both these men a standing ovation, and they deserve it. As much as I the pain to to say, Drake Younger deserves that victory here tonight at Proving Ground. And you have to feel bad for Scotty Vortex. After the months and months of chasing Drake Younger, that's how it's going to end. Drake's landing on a steel chair. The adult power man putting out Scotty Vortex. These two men, Golden Boy equals greatness. All right, let's hear the Golden Boy for the Golden Boy. So, DJ Allen in the office says that I have to have microphone time clear for that to live. But I'm going to go ahead and say I don't give a fuck. So gold. Charlie's running the opposite way. This, this this feud is far from over after the words of the Golden Boy in the closing moments. Scotty Vortex, you've learned a few lessons over the past few months. You see, in Indianapolis, you wanted to play with fire. You wanted to play with the Golden Boy. What happens when you play with fire? You get burned, son. <laughs> and status update, fantastic. I don't even think you got so much as a jab in, son. You were blinded, beaten, and a weakened man. Here tonight, the Golden Boy took everything you had, everything you can dish out to me, Scotty Vortex. But the fact of the matter is, I've always been better than you. I've been better at you than you at football when we were growing up. I could run longer and cross country when we were growing up. I got more girls. <laughs> I was in advance PE, pal, while you were in the summer school gym class with all the dropouts and child mothers and delinquents. You. you see, I've always been on a higher level than you, Scotty. You want to stay on the west side of that town where it's all grimy and gringy. See, I went around the world, kicked ass, cashed paychecks, and moved on up to the suburbs. You didn't want to follow me, Scotty, but that's okay 
because you see the Golden Boy is on a quest right now to become a two-time, two-time Tournament of Death champion. June 25th, I want my spot in Tournament of Death. I hear that there's a couple openings for a TOD qualifying match next month. Well, Scotty Vortex, as long as it's under my terms, if it meets my demands, if the creative control is put into the contract, I'll see you here next week at the or next month at the arena. As for right now, the Golden Boy has a bottle of bubbly chill. He's going to catch his red eye back to Indianapolis. I'm going to sit first class and sip on my mimosa. And then I'm going to be ready for the next time that your sleazy ass wants to come at me, Scotty. The Golden Boy has spoken. Drake, tonight you may have got one up on me. But that's not the end of the war. That's just one battle, Drake. I know where you live. I know where you wrestle. I know where you work, Drake. I can catch you anytime I want. But you know what? I'd like for it to be in front of a big old crowd. So all the people on the internet can talk about it. All the people live can watch me whoop your ass, Drake. Sure you may have got the best of me tonight. That's all right, you little cheap tactics. You want to hit me in the balls. You want to hit me in the balls, you fucking faggot. Guess what, Drake? I'm coming for you. Next time, TOD, I want you in TOD. Actually, I don't think there's enough room for us at TOD. Next month, I hear there's qualifying matches. I think maybe me and you should go one-on-one -on -one of those qualifying matches. See who the man is. Because I'm going to defend my championship at Tournament of Death. But Drake, you're my first priority. I'm coming for you, nigga. What? Are you kidding me? I don't think this is fun. Little Mondo! Little Mondo? What the hell is he doing back? Holy shit! I don't think... I, I don't think Little Mondo's been on the roster in what, how long? Over a year now was the last time we saw Little Mondo. But right now it looks like he has a statement. It looks like he's ready for action too! He is ready for God, it. I feel nostalgic right now.
You're ready. You guys think he's ready? He's doing like that. The voice of reason, Greg Excellent. Give him a shot. a big man will apologize. I can't take it back. I'm not quite sure if Excellent just accepted the apology though. ultra-violent dog collar match that I have ever seen, and Drake Younger, unfortunately, was victorious in that matchup. Not unfortunately at all, because tonight, Drake Younger, the golden boy, proved that Scotty Vortex was always the second fiddle in the Naptown Dragons, and the star of the golden boy is just going to keep shining brighter and brighter here in the golden era. Bottom line, superhuman effort by both competitors tonight. One of the damnedest matches I've ever seen. Absolutely wild. We had glass, we had chains, we had chairs, we had bloodshed, we had just absolute madness. Unbelievable match. And we still got a lot more yes, to come. that's not the only action here coming up. 
as in the main event here tonight for the CZW Junior Heavyweight Championship, Adam Cole defends his title against the People's Choice, A.R. Fox. But up next, Sammy Callahan challenges the ultra-violent beast, Masada. So Masada, we have you here before your match. Uh, you wanted to say something to the, to the camera. Uh, basically, I actually have a broken leg, and I just found out this past week I got in a car accident in Puerto Rico when Best of the Best was going on a debut in Puerto Rico, and actually got a puncture hole right in here, which ended up getting MRSA, which is never a good thing. And pretty much the doctor did X-rays on it, and it turns out I have a broken bone right here that actually I previously broken and didn't even know it probably like two or three years ago in Japan. So. Hopefully I do well against Sammy Callahan. I know he works the leg or tries to like screw the leg up, but we'll see how it goes. Masada here tonight that is sure going to catapult himself ever so close to a CZW world title shot at Masada right here with a boot to Sammy Callahan. When you're dealing with the ultraviolet beast, you cannot let him, you cannot, you cannot back away from him for one second because he is perhaps the toughest man in CZW history. Bicycle kick now Sammy falls to them with a big forearm rolls through. Cats and elbow goes down hard. The one thing you have to know about Masada in this match, if you get a close look, his left leg there is wrapped up. During Best of the Best 10 weekend, he was in Puerto Rico, and he, I, I, from what I understand, he was in some sort of accident, uh, I guess on his off day in Puerto Rico, and that's how the injury occurred, and I believe that is close to a fracture on his left leg, and that's how tough this man is. He's walking around with a fractured leg in a squared circle right now. You gotta admire the intestinal fortitude of Masada to take on this. See, look at it. There it is right there. That shot to that leg. And you gotta admire how Callahan's not gonna let it bother him. Callahan will take any opportunity in a match to win it, even if it means attacking a person's injured limb. Absolutely. Kick to the other leg now. It's gets shoved down by the powerhouse Masada. Some wrestling rolls through. Oh. Backslide attempt. Oh, boot right to the face. Hey, we've seen high flying tonight. We've seen ultra violence tonight. Right now, we're seeing more did it. The strong style portion of CZW proving grounds and Masada here going for the cover. One, two, but only a two count. And Sammy Callahan, wait a second, right back into a cover. But once again, Callahan able to get out of that. Hey, both of that, these men have proved a lot in their careers here in CCW, but Sammy Callahan has proved that he can't win the big one. And here tonight, it'd be a big one to win against the big man, Masada. He can't win the big one of late. He's been on a little bit of a slump as far as winning big matches go, but this guy has some, had some very major wins in his career here at CZW. He's just got to get back on the right track, and a big win over Masada. 
Oh. Just the right thing to do that for him tonight. Man, I called Sammy Callahan the anarchist of CZW. No one has caused more turmoil in the company's history than him. Oh, hard right shot right to Sammy Callahan's chest. They're right next to us here, and Callahan takes another shot. And a second. And they're right on, right on the table here. Oh, but Callahan showing that he can get a little ultra violent himself. And he's taking it to Masada right now. Both these men are just slugging it out. It was at CZW live in Germany this past fall where Sammy Callahan defeated Masada. And Callahan calling that Masada's going oh, right no. down to the concrete Explode floor. Explode on the floor. You see Masada countering it now. Well, now Masada's saying Callahan's going to the floor. DVD. Wait a second. Callahan pointing out of it. Into the ring he goes. Duck the elbow. Huge the kick face. in the face. Oh! And what a counter by the Ultra by the Beast. An international deathmatch superstar, Masada. Callahan's head, I think, was just decapitated by the Beast. And he's going right to work on the head and neck of Sammy Callahan and the chest. Look at him. Slamming that sternum on the hardest part of the wrestling ring, the apron. Look at break your sternum doing that. Masada's barely taking a sweat carrying around Callahan in the ultraviolet combat zone. And look at this. Oh, no. Oh. Listen to those chops to the back. Dropping Callahan down and a kick to the midsection as Callahan down and bit. Well, not maybe begging for mercy, but not looking good here. Masada is definitely the most powerful man in CCW. But Callahan might be the most might be the most resilient. The tenacity of Sammy Callahan can never be questioned. Hard, intense forearm. Masada taking the nasty punch. Put his back right there so bring it. And right to the road, taking out Masada, and both men are down in the combat zone. He challenged Sammy, and well, he got challenged by that forearm tope in the face. Yes, he did, but right now, both men are down, and this is what you want if you're Sammy Callahan. You want to make sure Masada's always down. The unfortunate part is it's on the outside of the ring where Callahan can't win it. You got that right, Jake, but Callahan knows what's going on and breaks the count. Well, Sammy definitely has fan support. That can't be denied. Right, coming over here. They're right now next to us. <laughs> it's Jake just Jake not. I, don't, I have nowhere to go. Oh! Masada has nowhere to go right now either. Wait a second. Callahan now taking Masada to the other side. Pointing the gun at that huge chop to the chest. And Masada's really but not going down. <laughs> Sammy Callahan giving these front row fans with their money to us. Oh! Chop to that banner, but what you might not know, oh! That look at his hand right there. Is that banner is attached to a steel barrier. They are too damn close for comfort for me. Masada now getting some distance. Oh! oh Jesus! Into the front row goes Callahan right into the last of the combat zone audience. Right on the cold, hard concrete, courtesy of the international deathmatch superstar, Masada. And look at Masada. Masada is just stalking his prey. That's what he does. The in his face, he shows no emotion. This, this, like what he's doing to Callahan means absolutely nothing. Well, it means a lot. Like another day in the office for Masada. Hey, Masada enjoys beating his opponents down. No. And Sam Kale's no different. No! Rise him out of that hard ring apron. Wow. And I'll tell you what, Callahan is one, you know, he's not one man to you know, just throw around like a rag doll. But Masada is looking like Callahan wasn't in best of the best last month. And Callahan is just some jobber here. Taking up those steps. Those wood and steel and four steps. And Callahan oh, right on there. Got it, an angle that can just really mess up your lower back. Shocking the spine of Sammy Callahan as he lays there in agony. Masada's not going to stop until he sees the body of Sammy Callahan down and out for good. Careers have been ended on landings like once, just like we saw right there. Ask Rick Rude about that. Ask Rick Rude Steve about that. Oh, ask Sammy Callahan about that now. now oh, he's getting up right now, though. Callahan is showing no. Oh, no. no. Power. Oh. 
fighting out of it. Oh, he's oh trying to. He's got some. No. No. Oh! Jesus. Last month, Callahan had four matches. Tonight, this is four matches in one as he's taking on Masada. And look at Masada, like nothing's going on here tonight. Hey, just another one day. Look like a baseball bat in that steel guardrail. Hey, Sammy Callahan is used to facing bigger men. He fared extremely well at best of the best against Daisuke Sekimoto. But here tonight against Masada, it's not going the same way. This is a different story for Callahan. Fellow Big Japan wrestling roster member, Masada. And look at Masada, he's just waiting. But Callahan beats the count. He beats the count because you cannot keep Sammy Callahan down. Well, maybe you can now. Oh, he his head off that mat like a basketball. Did you see the impact of that power pop? High angle power pop. He got all that one. You know, Masada isn't exactly the most animated human being in history, but after Sammy Callahan kicked out of that, you saw his facial expression was virtual shock. And we got to cover here. One, two, and that's got... Oh, Callahan! Shock to Sammy Callahan's system. That power bomb was, but he's back. You know what? I might be wrong. That wasn't shock. That was anger. He's angered Masada now. I do not want that pissed off Texan looking down over you, looking to put you away. Look at the eyes of Kellyanne. He's going into a zone that I've never seen right now. But Masada, I think the snap him out of that zone. Masada's gonna bring Sammy Kellyanne back to Earth. It's what he does. It's what he does. He pounds on people. Going right back to work on that midsection. Two knees to the midsection. And look at Masada. He's demanding that our official Brent Lauderdale count. Hey, Masada has been waiting for this match since CZW live in Germany because Sammy Callahan defeated him. Masada has won at Callahan since the fall, and tonight he's finally getting his fun in game. Callahan breathes back and says, screw you, the I'm not done yet. The anti-establishment attitude of Callahan might have just gotten him in trouble with the ultra-violent beast. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. That, that was not good. He landed on that, I think he might hit his neck. Yeah, you know, I don't know. You know what, Masada wanted to drop him back on that sternum he's been working over, but decided at the last second, you know what, I'm going to drop Callahan on his warped mind, and I hope I snap his neck in the process. That was the scariest slingshot suplex I've ever that goddamn thing. No remorse in the eyes of Masada. But Callahan, he's fighting back with this somehow. Now Masada going for a submission, going for that Texas Clothing Lee. submission. Sitting down. Brent just wrenching back on those legs. That's affects your lower back, your quads, your oh. knees. It stretches out your whole lower body and your lower back. All the weight of Masada is just resting on top of Sammy Cal. Stretch his body and right to an STF. STF yeah, is That's not a traditional STF. Look at him. He's got him in a complete chokehold right now. That's debatable. That's for the referee to decide, not you. Well, that is a chokehold. Well, it could be. This could be lights out for Sammy Callahan. Last month we saw it. Sammy Callahan showed no quit, but he passed out to his own strep muffler. That oh! Sammy Callahan raising the gun and definitely trying to fight out of this STS right now. All signs of life. Look at the power he out of it. Oh, yeah, but was that the last burst of energy Callahan's body can produce? Referee Brett Lauderdale calling for the break. But look at Masada, like, like nothing happened. Once again, like nothing happened, just another day on the job. Yeah, but you can't have that attitude when you're in the ring with Sammy Callahan. I mean, the man was had an accident, his leg practically broken, and he's walking around like it's nothing. And he's beating Sammy Callahan like it's nothing. But that Cal a sign of disrespect right there. But Callahan does hold a victory over Masada, but right now, oh, it doesn't look like it's going to be a repeat of what happened in Germany. Going right back to work on that back in that midsection. Now, look at him crushing the face while wrenching the neck in the back. You can see the air go out of his lungs. You can see the pain reverberate out of his body. And now this chin lock is definitely not a really help the situation for Sammy Callahan. It's just Reaching out to these fans for support right here in South Philadelphia. 
Sammy Callahan channels the energy of these fans into his matches and he uses it to his advantage. But he's gonna help the rope. Oh! oh, but Masada catches him and drops him on the knee. Tilted World backbreaker. And once again, Masada going back to the midsection. He's worked over the ribs and the lower back of Callahan. Every move Callahan does from this point forward is going to put that area of his body through agony. But once again, frustration now is finally beginning to set in on Masada. And look, and now he's starting to favor that leg that he injured last month in Puerto Rico. And this, and now Callahan, look at the face. Look at his face and the scowl on Callahan's face as he now slaps the oh, face oh, of Masada and right. the big mistake. And Callahan takes that chop like a man and now dropping the straps. And we saw the best of the best when he dropped the straps. That was all it for his opponents. And Callahan chop and kick and chop and kick and get some distance on the ropes again. Just Effing blasted with that European uppercut. He dropped him. Look how many shots it took Callahan just to phase Masada with one shot. Masada just dropped Callahan. Fellow Texan Dory Funk Jr. would have been fr proud of that move right there. Yeah, well, you know what? I think Callahan did the damage to the leg as Masada is favoring it more and more now. Just wearing that chest out with those chops. Masada now on the road. Oh, Callahan misses. Huge kick to the side of the head. Oh no. Sammy calling his shot. This might be it. Oh. Kellen's finally getting the time he deserves. But he's going for a cover now. One, two. Oh, Masada able to get to the ropes and break the count. To a lighter man, Callahan would be able to drag him to the center of the ring. But because of the size of Masada, Callahan was able to capitalize on that boot scrape. And now uh, Callahan finally dragging Masada to the middle of the ring. And that's. That's it. If he gets it locked on, that's going to be it for Masada. Especially on that leg. But look at Masada now. Oh, oh my God. Kicking him flush in the face. Yeah, a one-legged Masada is dangerous in any contest. And now look at the legs. Almost, if, if it wasn't broken, he could be close to now. Callahan now getting behind him, trying to go for that. Sam Masada rolls through the cover here. One, two, and only a two count. Masada, the big man. Masada. Oh, lifted low! That deadlift side suplex, and Masada down on the mat. Callahan's got to capitalize on this. This yeah, situation he created. We've seen this before. Oh, that forearm to remember. Taking Masada out. Cover here. One, two, and. Once again, Masada powering out of it. Once again, he's unable to get Masada to the center of the ring. But look, finally for the first time, Masada has spent a considerable amount of time on the mat, and he's completely favoring that left leg. But now able to get to up, up and block Sammy Callahan from getting to the top rope. To a lesser opponent, Callahan would have made it up there in time to hit whatever he had planned. But against a man like Masada, you have to work extremely quick. And I don't think Callahan's body can handle that right now. Much like it won't be able to handle this if Masada nails it. Masada now going for that superplex, and he nails it. Just driving more air out of Sammy Callahan's body. What an impactful superplex we just saw right there from Masada. But it took a lot out of the big man. Masada is down too. And I think for the first time in this match, we're seeing that the ultra-violent beast is human. Hey, he's definitely got some chinks in his armor, but he's always, always prepared for battle. Both men looking to get to their feet before the count of ten. Callahan gets to a fruit, and so does Masada. Oh, Callahan using his warped mind as a weapon with those headbutts. And look at Masada answering right back with that. Oh, shot for the trapezius. Oh, hard shot to the chest. Just the impact that these men are hitting each other with. Oh my god. It's like a shotgun going off. And now Callahan teeing off. 
Using his speed to go in the side of the Masada. Catch him. Wait a second. Oh. And reverses it. It's, oh, it looks like he's going for a pile driver. But Masada's got him up. And Wesley Kelly once again fights out of it. Oh. Look at that. And one shot. Back. Sending Callahan down to a knee, and now, no, not another power bomb. This time sitting out with it. Oh, Callahan kicking out, showing why he was a runner-up in best of the best ten. That's showing no quit here, but taking on Masada. Does any athlete in CCW kick out of more opponents' high, high offense, high impact moves than Sammy Callahan? I don't know, it takes so much to put this man down because the only move that put him down at best of best was his own stretch muffler. Very good point. Masada now looking for a third. Oh, and he nailed that leg. Leg out. That leg, he got it. Oh, 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 him in the face. And once again, Masada oh. kicks out. And now look at him, he's like a oh. shark in bloody water. Going right after that leg, and he's got him in the stretch muffler. The car wrecked leg. Maybe not, maybe not. Trying to turn his no, he's on him. And he's got a great find. This is it for Masada. How I'm much? I've never seen a man break out of a stretch muffler. How? Much as Masada had to fight through. He's pretty close to the ropes or from Anna's side, but Callahan has that car oh. wreck leg break by. Ahead now. Trap the arm. Anytime. He's, oh my. made Masada tap out. If that doesn't impress you, I don't know what will. The career of Sammy Callahan is one that everyone has followed. He's unable to win the big one, but tonight he gets a very big victory over Masada. This is what Sammy Callahan needs as he progresses here in CCW, finally trying to grab up and reach that brass ring. I've said it on CZWrestling.com, this is the year Callahan must make his because come 2012, if Callahan doesn't win the big match in CZW, Callahan might not have a career anymore. Sammy Callahan reaching out for a handshake. If there's one thing that's changed in recent months with Callahan, he's learned to respect his opponents, and I think that's gonna take him far here in CZW, showing his respect to the ultra-violent beast, Masada. CZW. And if it wasn't for that injury to Masada's leg, we could have had a different result. But nonetheless, Sammy Callahan, victorious here at Proving Grounds. Wow, what a match we just saw. Sammy Callahan making the ultra-violent beast Masada tap out. Those two warriors went at each other full force here tonight, but in the end, it was Sammy Callahan using the stretch muffler, perhaps the most dangerous submission move here in CCW, to make the international deathmatch superstar Masada tap out, something we didn't think we would see here in a combat zone ring. Yeah, you got to give uh, props to Sammy Callahan, but props also to Masada, who really brought the fight to him. He had that damaged leg of going into the match, but uh, Sammy smartly capitalized on it and uh, made him tap out. But speaking of Masada, Tournament of Death 10 coming up this June, Masada has been entered in the TOD 10 along with Dysfunction and the Necro Butcher. Oh, for more information and for tickets, visit CZWrestling.com right now. Ryan, what are you doing? Just collecting my head, man. Just collecting your head? Ryan, look at me. This is your shot. This is your chance to prove yourself to all the idiots here and all the idiots in the crowd. 
I know that. I know that. Look, I tried to get us a tag title shot when I talked to Maven, and then the asshole pulls the switch one on me, look, and now I'm in a match with Dan. Look, I it's understand. It's all about the tag titles. I understand, and I've been dealing with this crap since day one. You know because you were there, okay? People didn't respect me, and people took me as a joke. And after I threw DJ off the ladder and almost killed him, people started acting a little bit afraid of me, okay? Now this is your chance. You and Danny Havoc, okay? Danny Havoc! And don't worry, you know I'm there with you. into this matchup. If you've been following CZW over the past few months, Ryan Slater and Joe Gacy got themselves suspended. Whoa! Oh, oh, well, look over here with There's Mr. Tofinka, the bodyguard of Drew Gulak. Drew Gulak not here. He's on a trip to Jamaica, and he left Tofinka here to hold down the fort. But as I was saying, Ryan Slater, wait, Ryan Slater's going to attack with Danny Havoc. Ryan Slater just coming off suspension, and he and Joe Gacy back Maven Bentley in the parking lot at our last event at Best of the Best 10 and demanding a title shot. And Maven Bentley being the wily one he is, gave him one. And he gave Ryan Slater probably the one title match he didn't want, the Ultra Violent Underground Championship title and match. And Mr. Tofinga gave Ryan Slater an opening right here as he just blitzkrieg Danny Havoc and attacked him in the corner. And speaking of blitzkriegs, look at the speed of Ryan Slater. Perpetual offense from Ryan Slater who, as we have said throughout the show, has improved by leaps and bounds like so many other athletes in the zone. Yes, you know what? Ryan Slater has his task ahead of him as he steps foot in his first ultra-violent death match, an ultra-violent home run derby we have here in the combat zone. Well, look at Danny Havoc. 
Why does that feel like Ryan Slater's bringing it? No. After last month, the best of the best ten, which you can now see on hybrid ENT.TV, after seeing what Drew Kisai put him through, a few chops in the chest are sure as hell not going to put Havoc down. His hardcore body is a bit callous, a bit more callous now, we'll say. He can definitely withstand any and all punishment. Oh, look at that shot. Wow, he tags him real good. But think about the emotion. He might have knocked him out. Think about the emotional anguish that Ryan Slater has been through. Thanks to which Hey. And he deserves a suspension. Embarrassed. Don't even try to sugarcoat it. Embarrassed worldwide on the YouTube by a bunch of punks. And then suspended by Maven Bentley for quite frankly kicking too much ass. Yeah, he got suspended for being too tough. He better be too tough right now. He suspended for being too tough. He was suspended because he did exactly what our promoter Maven Bentley asked him not to do. A hard elbow on the top of the head, sending Ryan Slater down, but Danny Havoc pulled him right back up. And Danny Havoc, what does he have planned here now? Oh! Instead of 10 fists, God. it's 10 headbutts to the head. And this crowd firmly behind the death mask drunkard right now as he's taking it to Ryan Slater. Oh, hard into that corner. Almost took out two yeah. Oh! Both men met with boots. Oh my god, he's busted open from those headbutts in the corner, by the way. Yes, he is. But talk about using your body to hurt someone else and hurting yourself in the process. This guy will do anything. I think the scary part is... Oh! oh look at that elbow. Oh, that was pretty damn scary. But the scary part is, is the weapons that are across the ring here have not been brought into the match just yet. And if Danny had to get a hold of any one of these home run derby instruments of destruction, Ryan Slater could be smelling the end of his career. High impact match thus far. That falling elbow in the corner. Hit big dirt. There's a couple boosts to the gut. Ryan Slater now with a quick right hand and a second. And, and Ryan Slater now is taking advantage of what he needs to do. He needs to out wrestle Danny Havoc before any of that plunder, any of those ultra violent objects come into play. Off the ropes, gets the speed. Oh, drives that forearm into the small of the back. I think now setting him up. Torture rack, like. Oh, drops him on the knee. Oh, hilarious amount of his boots almost. Yeah, when Ryan, Ryan Slater back Maven Bentley in the parking lot with his partner Joe Gacy. Oh, no. This definitely was not the match he asked for. Well, he's not going to swing it. Well, he's got another bat. Oh, God. God. This was both thumbtacks. Thumbtack bats scare the shit out of him. He has the nail bat set up on corner. This is going to be Wait, wait, The chainsaw! Joe Gacy! No! No! Yes! And now he's swinging that bat like he's Pedro Serrano. And throwing it! Oh! Into the carpet strip goes Danny Havoc. The runaways never come alone. They always come together because they're always ready for a fight. Wait a second! the true blood. Casey's not supposed to be out here. This was not his title match. This is Ryan Slater's title match. Well, you know what? Maybe you, you, where where is where is Devin Moore? Where is his back in his traditional backup now? Well, we don't know where they are right now. They're, they, you know, Scotty might be being tended to in the back, and we never know. Devin Moore's got a big world title match to prepare for, probably. You gotta wonder where Devin Moore is because Devin Moore was put in a precarious position a few days ago on Wired and Danny Cavett came out and helped him. But right now the runaways with our oh those and in sight to the destruction of our ultraviolet underground champion, Danny Havoc. Tag team excellence once again. But it's not supposed to be tag team. Hey, the runaways are here to make a statement. Oh, this is gonna be sick. Oh, powerbomb, blockbuster combo by Chainsaw Joe Gacy and Ryan Slater. Look at him up like an accordion with that. Oh, here. Wait a minute. 13. 13. The one man will back. He's looking for some revenge because he wants to be part of the Runaways. And they didn't want any parts of him. And, but he's getting himself some of the Runaways right now. Hey, yeah, but you got to remember back in the Suicide Kings, Pulp Fiction War, these two were sworn enemies. Yeah, it is a bit strange that he's coming to the A, but you know what? It's all because of what the Runaways did to 13. We haven't seen 13 in a few weeks here in the combat zone because of the damage that the Runaway caused.
At least he got his proving ground. And I guess the old saying rings true. Your enemy's enemy is my, I don't know the saying, never mind. But the mutual bond between Danny Hall and the 13 for now is because the enemies, and look at this, the runaways retreating like they should. They didn't sign up for a tag match. Of course, the runaways running away just like they always do. Oh, but look at this. <laughs> they just ran in to a CZW World Heavyweight Champion and Scotty Vortex. Oh! Skull-crushing shots by Danny Havoc at 13. Two home runs. 13 getting himself some oh on the chainsaw. Absolutely disgusting baseball bat swing. The one-man wolf pass. Tim Park, Tim Park water has never been so dangerous. In the ring, meanwhile, though, we have Danny having a tenth in the pin, Ryan Slater, but only getting a two count. As Ryan Slater now is reversing it, sending Danny having on the ropes. Has it to the waist lock. Oh no, here we go, we got it. Oh, oh that's bad. And Danny has it. in the back. Meanwhile, in the ring, Danny Havoc taking down Ryan Slater. But look at the face of the chainsaw as those thumbtacks get lodged in his skull. And the runaways are going to wish that they made it a three-man wolf pack after what 13 is doing to them right now. So Gacy just screaming in pain right next to me right now, folks. Oh, no! Drives him into the concrete and that thumbtack back. And they're going upstairs with Ryan Slater catches him. Dropping him down on the tweet and there and setting him up in a tree of wall. He said, no, he's like, oh, taking that assault to the back of that. Now set up in a tree of woe. And Ryan Slater has that barbed wire bet. And who would have thought that the runaways could get ultra violent here in the combat zone? Oh, no. Bad intentions here. Slater winds up and wailing the fake barbed wire covered face of the deathmatch drunker. I think that was a hole-in-one right there. Damage has been done to all four of these athletes thus far. Ryan Slater now going right back on the attack of Danny Havoc. Slater with a roll-up. Unconventional death match uh, attempt to win a match. Hey, you gotta catch your opponent off guard at any time you can. Ryan Slater's doing what he must. No doubt about the jagged piece of wood right there. He's got a saw off. It is a saw off. And he's choking him with that saw off piece of wood. In a match that Ryan Slater didn't oh, want. Oh, digging it in his head. In a match that Ryan Slater didn't even want. He is looking quite impressive in this ultra violent home run derby tag team match. You know, Joe Gacy's been in some wars in the past. He was in the Tangled Web Twins. Oh, but he goes into the steal this time. This is Ryan Slater's first ultra violent affair. And he's doing quite well for himself, to quote you, because he's Ryan Slater and he's a determined young athlete. We see a 13 across the ring. Holy crap. That did not end well at all. Oh my god, thumbtacks just flying all over the. I'll tell you what, Ryan Slater and Joe Casey have to stay on the attack of these two experienced deathmatch wrestlers. Wait a second. Dragon, Dragon two marks attempt. Hook in the arm, hook in the leg. Oh! Driving him head first. Cover here, one. Two, and Gacy in to break it up. Joe sure, Gacy with battle moves across his head. With a punch, just raining punches now on Danny Havoc. Where ha Havoc's experience in the deathmatch style of wrestling, whereas the runaways are more experienced in a tag team match style of wrestling. And this is right now showing that the team of the runaways are much more cohesive unit than the, well, the unlikely team of uh, 13 and Danny Havoc. Yeah, 13 and Danny Havoc have gone to wars with each other. You know, you learn something about your opponent when you go through those kind of battles, but is it enough to compete with an experienced tag team like the Runaways, especially no. in an unorthodox element like this match? I don't know, they've got it set up now. Oh! Driving those tags into his back. Breaking the stick in the process. Such force, such power by Ryan Slater. I don't know if you can see this, but you can see the scars from the death match last month against Drew Kasai, and they're just taking it right to that lower back. Danny Havoc certainly needed those five weeks to recover, and this isn't what he expected. Oh, a man like Joe Casey dropping all his weight on top of him. Oh, what a flurry, what a combo. Bringing the high filing style to the death match. 
A very bloody 13 in for the save. 13, a bloody 13 in to gain some revenge on the Runaways. The one-man wolf pack on the attack against the Runaways, but how long can he function by himself with Danny Havoc is down right now? Mule kick to the midsection, slowing down 13, but 13 reverses it. Sending Ryan Slater to the road, stuck in the clothesline, oh. but being met with a boot to the face. Sending Ryan Slater down, and Danny Havoc is on the move on the outside with that steel chair wrapped in barbed wire. On him with that leg lariat, beautifully done. Fall away leg lariat there. Cover here, one, two, but only a two count. And meanwhile, on the outside, Danny Havoc taking it to Joe Gacy with that barbed wire wrap steel chair. And now he's got the barb two barbed wire wrap items. It was in November of, 19, of 2009. Oh! Wait, just the face! When Joe Gacy and Danny Havoc engaged in a war called Deck the Walls. There's still some bad blood there. Oh, look at 13 fly. See the drop, bitch. Joe Gacy trying to suplex on the outside while 13 goes to the cover but getting kicked out. Oh! Danny Havoc into the steel guardrail on the outside. Did you hear that, Buzz? Oh! That was I think I spent up. those guardrails over there with that. And Joe Gacy, maniacal look on his face right now. The, the thing that's different is Ryan Slater is not used to the ultra-violent style, but Joe Gacy is having competed in the deck the hall match as well as one of the tank and web matches. Yeah, Joe Gacy also competed this past summer at a weapons match in Tour of Death. He's experienced this. No one matched the experience of Havoc in this element. But Gacy is the second most in this match, and 13 also. So in a lot of ways, even though they get to work with the unit, the runaways are at a disadvantage because of Slater's experience, lack of experience in these matches. And, and now Joe Gacy setting up two chairs on the outside while 13 goes to work on Ryan Slater on the inside. Oh no, a third chair is not being set A barbed wire chair has been placed upon the two chairs. Oh, knee to the face. That could have been a knockout shot for Ryan Slater. And now a barbed wire crutch and a barbed wire board. But he took too long to stand up, I think. Wait a second. Danny had to find oh. a point back, but to no avail. 13 driven head first. Oh, release German suplex. Oh, snap Saito suplex. Oh no. Oh, he's got him up. Oh. Yeah. Trying to go for a choke slam. Saito suplex and a bridge. Casey's trying to go for that choke slam into that menagerie of barbed wire, but Danny Havoc reverses it. Have it now! Oh, oh my god! Rolling fire is carry! Right into that barbed wire and steel menagerie. Able to move. Oh my God. Danny Havoc laying his own body on the line to take out the chainsaw Joe Gacy. But right now he has to deal with Ryan Slater. Wow. Skip wild right here. Yeah, Ryan Slater has that water jug bat wrapped in beer bottle can uh, tops. That looks like more of a weapon for the deathmatch drunkard. 13 able to avoid it. Misses. That's what I was Oh, right to the stomach, to the back. I think that was a double right there. And now he's got that water jug set up. Oh, oh Steven third. It. Going up top. And here he's going for the home run shot. Oh, oh. good lord. Did you see the height 13 got? He dented that water jug to uselessness and a two count only. Yeah, you say uselessness. I'm pretty sure these athletes will think of something to do with that again. That's a good point. Maybe you can't drink water out of them anymore. No, I definitely want to do that. Now look at Danny Havoc setting up all the toys in one big pile. Oh, Jesus. This is Danny Havoc's playhouse. It's like the most effed up Christmas morning ever right here on the rematch. Yeah, I, I second that one now. Oh, no, here we go. Danny Havoc has him up. Well, they're doing teamwork here, surprisingly. Oh, no! Oh, we got T-Ball home run. Two, three! And I'm pretty sure the Runaways are wishing they remained suspended. And Drew Blood handing back the flash. 
This is just another day in the office for the deathmatch drunker, Danny Havoc. And this well, time, with the unlikely assistance from the one man Wolfpack 13, who just wanted some vengeance for being, well, not being allowed to be a runaway. Yeah, but you gotta wonder where this leads between 13 and Danny Havoc. One night, one night stand in the friendship. Oh, wait, wait. Is there a drinking bond going on here? Little F. Williams for everybody. 13 has been one to pass up a drink. Oh yeah, he's gonna have all. These men's love of ultraviolence and alcoholism seems to have brought them together here tonight, along with their hatred of the Runaways. Hey, Dev, you steroid-taking fuck. I just got back from the future, and I seen that I win the world title tonight. Not because I could do 150 push-ups. Not because I know that you're somewhere in the back smoking dope. But because I'm a better wrestler, I'm a better athlete, and I'm just all around better than you. So, Dev, eat shit. He's got a scarf.
Was Ego really serious with that introduction? The epitome of masculinity, Ego eyes up the championship. He never lost in a singles match back at best of the best five weeks ago. Tonight is the Ego's night, the perfect combination of grace and might. The man sent here straight via God's penis to be the CCW world champion. The Ego, Robert Anthony, will not stand for Devin Moore and his decadent he's been injecting himself with. Wow, I don't know if I can follow that. Uh, Robert Anthony, not, not, sure, here. not short on modesty uh, at all. Oh, not short on uh, entertainment value. I, I can't really uh, lie. It's pretty awesome interest. I mean, Robert Anthony is is truly in one of the top competitors in CCW. He wouldn't have become the CCW World Heavyweight Champion. But is he a douchebag? I have to agree. What? Devin Moore, I'll admit, maybe the finest Company. That's why he holds the title with the way he beat the ego. Look out! Is Devin Moore going to go? Incoming! Oh, right out to the outside, taking out ego. And Devin Moore showing why he is, well, he was a former prince, now he's the crown king of Philadelphia wrestling. And this has got to be a big moment for Devin Moore. His first defense of the CZW title in his home base here in Philadelphia. He's got dozens of them members in the crowd watching him hoping he can retain and it's the greatest man on the planet the ego Robert Anthony Devin Moore going to throw ego right into the I think in the second oh, round terrible landing for ego but those fans are so lucky they'll never get such a brush with greatness what does Devin Moore have planned as he's now right here at the, at the ring to, uh, excuse me our timekeeper Devin Moore he's got something to plan I have no idea what as Papa Jr. tries to tell me to get back in the ring he's going for a scarf Oh, come on. That's style right there, James. That is style. Very fast and forward in this spring. Up! Oh, oh, crazy! That's what happens when you try to mock the ego, Devin Moore. The ego, back in the day, used to wear his cape, which he's since ditched, even though he's still a superhero. Run around the ring and dive in the crowd and his opponent. Devin Moore was trying to take it old school, but the ego just took him to school. Both men now, well, Ego at least, crawling back to the uh, ringside area, kicking Devin Moore while he's down. Devin Moore struggles to his feet. Oh, hard knife edge drop to the chest of Devin Moore. Feeling a little worse for wear after that. Yeah, but is Devin Moore's kingdom going to come crashing down on him here tonight at Proving Ground? He's got to prove he's worthy of holding that title against a former champion like the Ego. Oh. I think he proved it last time out at International Incident, which you can now get on HybridENT.TV, that he deserves to be champion. And this is for the first time now. Robert Anthony is all alone in the ring. Oh! Big backbreaker, and followed up by a cover one, two. And if it's my opinion that Robert Anthony has to prove that he can beat Devin Moore without the help of anybody else. Robert Anthony drawn with the fans, making sure they know how good he is. Oh, trying they know. To, trying, trying to show Devin Moore how good he is right there with that beautiful European uppercut. Do you know how many of the Ego Robert Anthony fan newsletters come out every week in the mailbox? I'm sure you're a regular subscriber. I am. And I'm sure you watch this damn internet show too, right? He invented the internet. Yo, that is just funny. I actually like his internet show. I can't I, it, This is funny. Punch it down more in the head. Everybody else is funny on the show. Ego is just as annoying as always. Ego now. Has the champ in a, Ego's got the champ in a bad spot. But he does have Devin Moore in a spot that he wants him at, and Devin Moore does not want to be at. Oh, hard kick right between the shoulder blades and a uh, disrespectful little uh, kick to the jaw. 
the ego Robert Anthony. You know, confidence doesn't describe him. I don't know what kind of stratosphere you need to be in because he's that good. He has every reason to love himself the way he does. E ego is certainly an uh, apt name for him as now he's got him. He's got him firmly held up in that beautifully applied vertical suplex, showing all the fans saying that's all day. And now look at this. Like I said, like I said, the perfect combination of grace and might. Slamming Devin Moore down. You know what? If he's so good, he'd still be the champion right now. Even the best lose sometimes. Devin Moore is one of the best athletes I've ever seen, and he's lost match support. In fact, he lost equal to ego at status of eight. Fantastic! And that was almost fantastic, which Devin Moore was able to kick out. Uh, there's a little asterisk next to that match on how Devin Moore lost. You know it was an There's an asterisk next to Devin Moore's title reign. Thank you for bringing that up. The ego. He called out Devin Moore, who ended up on the signature pharmacy's list a couple of years ago, but somehow managed to avoid his name being sent out to the press. He's a sly man, scumbag. He might be a scum, well, he was a scumbag, but he's definitely not steroid. Are you kidding me? He comes in here clear-headed, you're saying. Look at the power of Ego. Wow, press slam position. Ego does have wow. the strength of a silverback, the beauty of a flamingo. That's what the ego is. Just the game is over that top. Rim or something there, all the stuff you're saying. I wish I took notes. I'd probably be a lot better at this. Drops his chest first, unceremoniously onto that top turnbuckle. You saw his rib cage hit that steel barrier between the turn post and the turnbuckle. That was actually the uh, turnbuckle he landed on there. Isn't that right, Dandler? That's what I'm calling you to. I'm combining the names so I don't have to dress you separately. Oh, You're killing oh, me, bro. For now, let's just call the match as Robert Anthony has Devin Moore down on the mat, and it's exactly where Devin Moore does not want to be. Exactly. We saw the ego drop Devin Moore's sternum first, and that's going to affect Devin if he goes for that signature shooting star. He's going to get a full rotation on it. Devin Moore being down off the ropes. Oh, being well, slammed nice. down right. His whole body just slammed down face first. Look at the ego. He's enjoying this. This is the man who unceremoniously took his title five weeks ago at Best of the Best 10. Oh, now he's king of the world. He invented that saying, too. Trademark that. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure James Cameron really has that trademark. Was he the only survivor of the Titanic as well? As now, yes. Ego ascending the top rope, perhaps. Oh, what, Ego now has snap effects, too? The timeless classic. Ego is on the top right now, soaking in the adulation of this audience. Oh, oh too long, and he's gonna oh, pound. Yes, six, seven, down. Let's pick up a quick way. Two, and that's gotta be it. all. Oh. half the count away. That's how he put down the Wire champion Drew Gulak five days ago on CCW Wired, but he couldn't put down the Ego here tonight at Proving Grounds. Oh, wild. Swinging in Zagiri, and Ego showing his athleticism, stopping Devin Moore from whatever he had planned. Now Ego, look at the ending of Wish! Dropping Devin Moore down, and hooking Devin Moore up. What's he got planned now? Oh, big power bomb. Cover one, two. It's it. Transitions into that high angle Boston Crab. He's what? saying, oh, darn tap. He's not saying that at all. We're seeing is Devin Moore's title reign fading away from him if he cannot reach those ropes. I don't see that at all because Devin Moore has got life in him and he's towering to that bottom rope and he gets to the bottom rope showing his heart and determination that he showed to get the title in the first place. But Devin Moore, he's in a lot of pain right now. The ego has hit some high impact offense on him and he's worked over the lower back and sternum area of the champ. Devin Moore now still holding on to that bottom rope, but not really showing much else moving as the ego might have did enough damage to put Devin Moore out. Old school, yeah, baby, says Robert Ego Anthony, setting him up for something we have definitely seen before. Yes, he likes to use this Romero special. He called it a taco pizza, but we don't care what he calls it now because all we know is it's beautiful whenever he executes it. Goes wrenching back to his arms. This is not where Kevin Moore wants to be right now on the opposite end of this. Oh, oh no. 
This is great. Slicing it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Send him up into the lights almost at that. One. Extends to another leg and he kicks out at a two and a half count. Once again, Devin Moore able to kick out. Finding the will to win is Devin Moore. And look at the frustration on Robert Anthony's face right now. Yeah, Devin Moore is a fierce competitor with the heart of a champion. But tonight doesn't have what it takes to beat the motivated ego, Robert Anthony. A man who never was defeated for that title in a singles match. Yes, Devin Moore beat him in an international incident. But we don't know what kind of shady shenanigans Devin Moore had with, had with the official that night. We saw what happened at Best of Best with Devin Moore's best friend, Drew Blood. Cover one, two. Kick that after two. Done. Drops underneath the clothesline. Big kick to the face. The Verde kick. Verde kick. kick is right. Copper here. Wait a second. What? What the hell is he doing out here? Joker. The Cambodian action. Black G. Black G sighting. This is a bunch of crap. Devin. Devin. Turn around. Hey, Devin. Devin, pay attention, man. Black G's with the assist. Come on. We got a new champion. We have a new champion. The second coming of the fantastic Aramigo. We get down now. Thank God. That higher power that has been with Devin Moore every step of the way since July 2010 is with him again tonight. Helping him. Helping him stay alive here at Proving Grounds. Helping him remain CCW World Heavyweight Champion. It's helping him right now, but the ego's on the attack, and Devin Moore's title reign hangs in the balance. Oh no. Here we go. No. Devin Moore flipping through it. Roll up. Once again, another one. One, two, three. Yeah. Oh, come on. I'm like a pack of vultures now. This is crap. This is unity. This is unity for a common cause, and that common cause is gold. Someone in the game. Control of the thing. Black G's just grabbed the ball. This is a bunch of soilers. Here we go. The Briscoes. Evening the team's up now. What did the Briscoes have to do with this? That was a one night shot with them and more. If there was a question, if there was a question about why Devin Moore should be champion, how he didn't, he won it in a tag team match, that, that should be all over right now. That's right. and I don't like it. Hey, it's the truth though. They already had their chance. Next in line. I didn't really see many tag teams. I didn't really see any many tag teams back there earlier tonight when I was back in the locker room. I, I really didn't see a tag team in the locker room. I wonder who the hell do you think you are in American Champs business? Stay back. I have an idea. Briscoes, I can teach you something. Briscoes, the South has lost. It's 2011. It's time to take that propaganda off your head and stop being a couple of racists. Any team, any time, anywhere. Guys, I was hoping they would say this. I have somebody, I have some people who want to take care of these racists. Oh no. The hell does Ego have planned? could it be? Wait a second. Wait a second, I know that music. The Bristol Brothers, I want to introduce you. Oh no. 
to my friends from Nigeria, to a Nigerian nightmare. Oh my God, the Nigerian nightmares are here in CZW. The Briscoes have never taken on a team bigger than them. Yes, but they haven't taken on a team that's so unorthodox. They fought some of the greatest teams in wrestling history, but tonight they're going to have to follow their own advice and man up or shut up because these are the two men better than anyone else in the world who can shut Mark and Jay Briscoe up. Absolutely savage human beings in the ring with just that far out look in their eyes. I think they smell flesh. I hope they not I hope they knock back a few because I don't think the Briscoes are gonna step up to these two. Now I believe that right now this is Saifu in the ring of the Nigerian nightmares. And look at Mark Briscoe, he's fired up. He's not one to back down from a fight, no matter how big that challenge may be. They've got to stick and move, guys. They've got to hit and run. That's got to be the strategy here, these two mammoth human beings. That's challenge. <laughs> oh my this. god. Look at the power of Sai Fu pushing back Mark Frisco into the ropes. Sumo like a uh, thrust there, sending Mark Frisco careening back into the ropes. Yeah, but I'm sure that's not how he learned how to do it. I don't think they have sumo wrestling or television in Nigeria. Yes, you get a lot of weird emails from there, but these men learned how to fight in the jungle. He was doing that to zebras and lions ever since he was a baby boy, fresh out of the womb, or whatever creature birthed him. The birth canal he came out of must have been a scary sight. I can't imagine. As now, Jay Frisco with a big shoulder tackle. It's a scary sight when Jay Briscoe can't take a man down with a shoulder clock. Trying again. Lots of force. Saifu says, no way. I think he says that. He actually said. Oh no, here we go, Jay Briscoe. Right in his face. And you know, I'm almost speechless here right now. It's the Nigerian nightmares. Wow. Staggering him a little. But not for Briscoe down. Wow. Thanks, his brother, compatriot.
countryman into the ring. Fellow creature. Fellow I, creature. I believe this is my phone. Checking my sources now. I have no idea what they even make of this, to be honest with you. No, this is, I mean, look at it. This is the biggest human being I may have ever seen in my life. It's like Tugboat Taylor went out in the jungle and created a new race for himself and just decided to come back as a bigger savage than ever. Maybe when that duel of the butcher is what it is, but here we go. That's either here or there. Steps on the foot, finding a weakness there. A weak, you call that a weakness? The band barely flinched. Well, he didn't. Leave out a bellow. That was a mating call. Who knows what they plan on doing to the Briscoes if they win this match in the Tag Team Championship? Oh no! Oh no, god! No. Oh! I think the ring just almost got broken. Yeah, how is the ring standing after that impact? Over 460 pounds just came crashing down on Jay Briscoe thanks to that belly to belly suplex. These guys are positively awesome. The Nigerian Nightmares. And look at the slow, methodical style. Good tag team wrestling here. And the Princess Sheeta on the outside, pleased about what is happening to the Briscoes right now. She certainly scares the shit out of me. Oh my God, I don't even want her to come near me. Mark with the blind tag. Oh no. And he got caught. But Double Jake on that bird. Down goes the big man. And finally, a Nigerian Nightmare is down on the ring. Yeah, they have to stay on these and they have to use double team moves like that this whole match. Mark Frisco freaking the punches and chops. <laughs> Nigerian nightmare. We call him Saifu. You sure that's it? Yeah, Saifu did not fall though. Oh! oh that foot from Jake Frisco falls it in with a big clothesline. I, I don't think my phone understood what he just said, and I think it's probably good for Jay Frisco that my phone didn't understand what he said. Hey, he, he understood the subcontext was very negative, and that's only gonna anger him. He's punching that guard in his face. Really, I mean really. The Frisco brothers are the premier tag team in all of professional wrestling today, and for the first time they are possibly outmatched right now for the Nigerian Yeah, night. but that's only because no promotion has wanted to bring in the Nigerian Nightmares because of the damage they cause in the end. I don't want to use a term like blacklisted, but that's the term to use. What was it, nine nine people in at least eight different states? These guys just laid hey, the rest. Hey, that's yeah. only the records in America. Oh my god. 32 tons mate. And now, Mark Briscoe. Oh, sorry. Oh, caught him. Look at the power. I got baby. <laughs> Whoa! Fall away slam. Look. Whoa. Something just came flying around. I believe Siphon just tagged in my through by smacking him on the head. Well, that's how they communicate in other countries. Not everyone's civilized like America. Oh, no, oh, no. Speaking of uncivilized. Oh, my God. Some blood leaking out of the mouth now of Mark Briscoe. Internal injuries, perhaps. Oh my God. <laughs> I am just in awe at the Nigerian nightmares. I think for the first time, the Briscoes may be regretting their open challenge. The Briscoes, maybe for the first time in a long time in their career, are in serious. Jeopardy, not just of losing a match, that happens to all the greats, but of being permanently damaged. Yes, it's tight, I see my crew now going to work on Mark Frisco, having Mark Frisco in their corner. I don't think it's on purpose, but nonetheless, it's great strategy. Oh, oh God, all 900 pounds on top of Mark Frisco, driving his throat into that bottom. Oh, oh God. I hope he really won't miss his oh. hip. Wow! I really hope Mark Briscoe has some damn good insurance right now. Oh he's my gonna need God. it at last Landed on his kidneys as well as you can see Mark favoring him. Oh God, he's stepping on the throat now. He's gonna crush the esophagus. 
Mark Briscoe has never taken a beating like this. He's been in some of the most high-impact matches ever, but he's never had to deal with two, two I don't I don't know if I want to call them athletes, but they're sure as hell athletic for gazelles. What's a gazelle? I forget what that is. Is that a big creature? They're kind of lies, actually, but it's okay, buddy. <laughs> they're very athletic, but we're hippos. Oh, God, that's oh. number one. Oh! Rolling kick! God, some, look at this tandem. Oh! Wow. The Briscoes being laid, the Mark Briscoes is being destroyed right now. And Jay how do you wrestle a waterbed? These guys are absolutely gigantic. You can't even do anything to them aside from punching and kicking them here. How do you wrestle a Hummer, essentially? A Hummer that has no regulations attached to it. And Sizer, he was driving his thumbs into both eyes on Mark Briscoe. Mark Briscoe probably can't even see right now after this attack. What an absolutely awesome display of offense from these men. The dump truck-like offense and size of the Nigerian, off Nigerian nightmare is just laying waste Mark Briscoe. What's going to happen when Jay Briscoe gets in there? I think he's going to suffer the same fate. He's certainly better than in there or else this match is going to be over really quick. Yeah. In short order even, this definitely has to be a nightmare of the Briscoe's dreams. Like, there, for the first time, they're completely outsized and outmatched. And look at Brett Lardell, wary of Mayafu, who's standing on the outside. Yeah, he's in a bad situation right now. How do you gain control of a team like the Nightmare? No, you don't. That's how. I guess you just... Oh, no! No! Careers with this move right here! Oh, God. Oh, my Jesus Christ! No! Wolf works the bowler that killed Piggy in Lord of the Flies. Mark Briscoe is done. Mark Briscoe's career may be finished here tonight. Out to the floor and a heap is Mark Briscoe. As Sheeta. She a tribal dance of sorts. And she's going to attack him. Look at all that white powder here. They're sure they're not the Colombian nightmares. Oh my god, look at Sheeta. There's a female about four foot six who's beating up Mark Briscoe. Get her damn face, man. That is not a normal woman. That's a damn. I don't even know what to say that is. That is shocking. It's whatever the nightmares need her to be at any time. That's shocking. I'm really at a loss right now. These guys are so impressive here right now. Side from catch. Oh! Good throw it in for Briscoe. Who looks shocked he was able to tag him? And in comes Jay Briscoe. Forearm! Forearm! Jay oh, Briscoe. Oh. Boot to the face! That really sent my crew reeling. I and now Side is getting attacked on the corner as Jay Briscoe is going to the high rent district here in South Philadelphia. That's what he's got to do. Oh! oh my body press. One, two, oh. two count only. And look at those kicks to the face has my food really. And now the Briscoes for the first time able to get some tandem offense on the Nigerian Nightmare. There they are. Laying it in. That's what they gotta do. They got to do. strong. But that didn't work. But that didn't. Cover here. One, two, and my food in to break up the count. the Briscoes now, they gotta use their speed to their advantage. They gotta use the traditional style of wrestling and throw off the nightmares. Here we go. Great train coming. Boom. Oh, my, oh no, I forgot about this. You don't try. No, double headbutt sending down the Briscoes. You can't hurt the head of a Nigerian. Exactly what I was trying to say earlier. Oh no. Here we go. This is not good. That was one hell of an Oreo cookie right there. A sacrifice style Oreo by the Nigerian Nightmares. Oh no. What, what is it going to the top rope? What the hell have they have planned now? They have planned what they wanted all along. They have oh. planned the sacrifice of Jay Briscoe. Oh my. There's no way the ropes will hold this man. <coughs> oh. Oh, he, he's an 
Peacock style climb the top rope. He's not 100% sure how to do it. No, he's not. <laughs> And that might have been the break that the Briscoe brothers needed. But it's my fear not able to I'm not sure if my fear not able to climb up the rope. I still never saw him do hold. that. I certainly have never seen him. Uh, the sad scary thing is I've seen my move on the top rope in many wrestling rings, and it's not pretty the damage left behind. And the Briscoe brothers better be thanking Jesus Christ right now for that mishap. And my fear looks really thrown off. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. He's falling into many coconut trees in his life. He should be fine. Oh, no. Now Saifu slamming down Jay Briscoe and Saifu now going to climb the turnbuckles. And he's delivering the lighter one. Oh, no. Oh, no. What? Wait a minute. Mark Briscoe now holding him. Oh, my God. No. No. No way. They're not going to do this. This is impossible. They're not going to do this. Jay Briscoe! Oh, my God! <laughs> One, two, he caught him! Wow! Oh, no. This just proves that the CCW Tag Team Champions are the best tag team in the world. But it looks like Jay Briscoe is definitely down and out. Jay Briscoe's neck may have been injured. Oh man, I'm just in shock. You don't like to see this. But that means Mark Briscoe is left in the ring, and Philly's most wanted in the ego are out here. Oh man, this is not this does not look good for the Briscoe brothers. Victorious. Of course, Philly's most wanted out here. Oh man! Trying to rain on the parade of the Briscoe brothers. Look at uh, how is Jay Briscoe moving right man, now? Man, I'm really concerned for Jay Briscoe's well-being right now. This is not not good to see him like this. Just been knocked out by his left knees and his beautiful shiny neck. We got new tag champs. Come on, Rap. What the hell is going on here? No, Mario, don't count this name, man. Don't count. What the hell is going on here? Yes! Shea Briscoe injured after attempting to lift up the Nigerian Nightmares. And Philly's most wanted to stole the tag team titles. This is a bunch of crap. Jay Briscoe can barely move after that last match. Well, why did Mark Briscoe agree to this? What happened here was the Black Keys, the Ego, and the Cambodian Axler devising a bulletproof plan to take down the Briscoe brothers and regain the Tag Team Championship here tonight at Proving Grounds, where Phillies both want to prove they are the best tag team on earth. This is, this is just a damn shame.
This is what has, this is how they want to win. Stole the damn titles once again. Screwing the Frisco brothers. Because the Philly first one couldn't defeat them, this is how they're going to do it. It's an absolute disgrace. All praise due to the Black Bees and the Cambodian Axe Murder with their associate, the Ego, Robert Anthony. May 14th will be a day etched in the annals of CZW history and one that we can look back on with great pride. I think he's still great, these two. Jay Briscoe might have just, I'm not sure if he's feeling his arm. He's really they need to get some help out here and help him out. He's clearly not a good way right now. No, he is not. This could be a pinched nerve. I mean, he basically squatted 600 pounds with him. Why is why is why is Black Sheep still the job? Really? Why? He's now challenging little kids. This is what he does. What a wild scene this is. What an awful scene. I'm just soaking it all in. Black Sheep doesn't like the Wow, what a mouth on that kid. The emotions that Black Bees incite. They should be disgraced. They should be freaking disgraced. That's how they want to win the titles. My moment is my destiny. You see, Adam, the first two times you had a little trick up your sleeve, but not this time. Oh no, this time I'm gonna get what's rightfully mine, what I've earned, what I've worked so very hard for. Yes, yes, I have. So tonight I'll go out there and fulfill my destiny. I uh, I find it, I find it funny, but not surprising coming from the Combat Zone Wrestling audience that no matter how much I've accomplished, no matter how much I've achieved, there's still one name that rings throughout this arena every time CZW comes to town. And that's A.R. Fox. A.R. Fox. I've beaten A.R. Fox not once, but twice. And tonight will be no different because I am on the momentum train of a lifetime. There is nobody in the combat zone, there's nobody in professional wrestling that can touch me right now. 2011 CZW Best of the Best 10 Champion, baby! And the current reigning defending dominant one year anniversary of Adam Cole being the CZW World Junior Heavyweight Champion. Mia Yim may not be at ringside for me tonight, but I can promise that the results will not change.
You may be wondering right now where Mia Yim is. Mia Yim is on a CZW tour of Japan right now. After a, well, a court injunction placed her there because she did not feel comfortable being here after DJ Hyde said that she would be handcuffed to Sammy Callahan to prevent interference in this matchup. And usually when there's handcuffs and Mia Yim and a camera present, it's a beautiful thing. But in this case, it would have been tragedy because Sammy Callahan surely would have beat up Mia Yim for no reason. And this is the third encounter, the third encounter for the Junior Heavyweight Championship between AR Fox and Adam Cole. It was at its always bloody in Philadelphia this past October where Adam Cole defeated AR Fox. Some said it was due to outside interference, some miscommunication. And then, at Cage of Death, AR Fox earned his rematch against Adam Cole and also came up short against young, perfect Mr. Adam Cole. And here we stand tonight. CZW Proving Grounds. Ken, AR Fox prove he is the top junior heavyweight in CZW, or will Adam Cole continue to prove for the last year since he won that title in May of 2010 that he is the top star in CZW junior heavyweight division? Bottom line, I'm really happy that both of these awesome athletes are getting the platform of a main event at CZW right here, right now. As these are indeed two of the best wrestlers in the world. Yes. Adam Cole, fresh off his best of the best 10 victory, while his controversial victory. Well, you can edit that part out. And AR Fox was chosen as the people's choice at best of the best 10. And now both men here in the main event, like you said, Ralph Miller, both men deserving of this main event. But quite frankly, I hope that Adam Cole finally loses his damn title because I'm getting really sick and tired of the power couple here in CZW. If you look back 15 months ago when AR Fox debuted here in CZW, his confidence has nothing but the belt, along with his ability, but his confidence when he walks the ring, when he's in that ring, he believes he can do anything he sets his mind to, but can he prove that tonight with the title on the line? Yeah, he certainly has that swagger, as does uh, young Adam Cole. Uh. Well, this man has proved he can do everything. One year, 364 days ago at this fight, he won that junior heavyweight championship, and he's defended it with pride and honor against countless opponents. I've never denied that. I, I, I praise both of these men, these young wrestlers, you know. The accolades are just countless. You know, just listen to the crowd right now. They're saying the accolade that we all know. Adam Cole tapped out last month to the stretch muffler, and he really should not be considered best of the best 10 champion. Well, he's got the trophy, he's got the girlfriend, he's got the title, he's got the ability, he can be whatever he wants. He's one of those people that was just born for success. I hope he's an air traffic controller, this is about to get wild right here. AR Fox, big drop kick to the face. And right now, DJ Hyde, the boss of CZ Dutch. Wow, all the way, Rana, beautifully executed by AR Fox. Sending Adam Cole out to the floor. Fans now. He's got that crazy look in his eye, Naylor. AR Fox can oh. feel it. AR Fox. <laughs> He's calling a timeout. Wait There's a no second. Oh, Fox and Adam Cole. Papa Giorgio. Crashing down on Adam Cole. And the CCW audience is on their feet for the people's choice. AR Fox. And that is the reason that AR Fox. Junior heavyweight champion. How resilient is this guy? Smashed his leg off that steel guardrail. Grimaced in pain for, you know, a couple seconds and was like, no, this is the main event. This is CZW. Yeah, this I'm is the, bringing it to the dance. This is AR Fox's biggest chance in his young wrestling career to make a name for himself. It's all roaming trust. And Adam Cole showing why he's a chance. Setting him out to the floor. Perhaps the most super kick of all time. Pence Fox to the outside, and Adam Cole now owes a chance to regroup after that onslaught by Fox. And he's incited the emotions of the boss, DJ Hyde, who's out here at ringside to make sure no shenanigans like last month happened uh, happen again here at CZW Proving Grounds. We know this is going to be one-on-one. -on -one. Mia Yim is in Japan. I've seen it on her Facebook. That's a real deal, buddy. Oh, no, you look at her Facebook a little too much. I think you got it on your phone here right now. Oh, God, yeah. It's a nice Facebook account, not gonna lie. Oh, now, Adam Fox that. Adam Cole oh. now taking AR Fox and driving it back. 
people are getting a little excited. And look, what, what is Hyde doing here? This match, if the referee isn't counting him out, I don't know why DJ thinks he should be getting involved. Cole is doing nothing illegal. Get out of the ring. Don't give him, don't give him the damn right ball. Right now, we got a classic ass whooping via current best of the best. CZW World Junior Heavyweight Champion. And the best please stop it. Adam Cole. This is not I I've done a pretty good job. Fox, you son of a Oh, yeah, Cole, so resilient. You can't put a man like Adam Cole down. This oh man's for everything he has had. He's earned everything he's got. Yeah, look, please never give up your headset again. I can't stand Adam. Any athlete comes here and yells at me, they're getting my microphone. I'm sorry. You know what? They say you can measure a man's confidence by the woman's looks on his arm. And if she's a 10, he's got the confidence of a champion, a man who can't be put down. Oh, no, the Tuckers, they are Fox. They are Fox now. Ring for no! Tried for a slingshot and landed very poorly there on the knee of Adam Cole. He says, hey, I get a sticker. Two, count only. And How many gold stars are you going to give Adam Cole later tonight? Because he's earned every one of them. I'm sure you have a lot of gold things to give him later on, but that's between you guys. Aaron Fox now. Off to the corner, throwing some quick jabs to the uh, stomach area of Adam Cole, trying to just stun him and get some distance right now. Adam Cole hammering on the back of AR Fox. AR Fox is in a rough spot right now. Adam Cole has been one step ahead of him. After Fox's initial flurry of offense, Cole has been one step ahead and has been taking advantage of Fox, slowing him down. One count only. Yeah, one count only. AR Fox able to kick out of that. I mean, this is pure adrenaline now for AR Fox. This is all with the Junior Heavyweight Championship of the entire world. And AR Fox is not going to let this main event opportunity slip. This is AR Fox's first main event. And if he loses this one, it could be his last Junior Heavyweight title shot for a long time. Third opportunity. Took Adam Cole three shots to win it. Will we be saying the same about AR Fox? Irish whip reversal, AR Fox up and in. And Adam Fox flip. Hard right hand with jaw. Screening now, Adam Cole so taking, taking his eye off the prize. It's taking way too long. If you give AR Fox time to breathe, huh? you're going to No, oh, actually, head scissors. One, two. See, just like I said, took too much time to AR Fox able to reverse it. But Adam Cole right back, firing him down with an elbow to the face. A knife edge like elbow right to the jaw. AR Fox now reaching for the ropes, reaching for anything. Right shoulder up on that pinfall attempt. Pure instinct right there, kicking in as AR Fox kicks out of that spinning combination. AR Fox with a pain grimace on his face, fighting back with a double sledgehammer. Both men now exchanging chops in the center of the ring. Think about it, AR Fox, this is the biggest match of his career. He once drove 19 hours to a CCW show, and now he might have the right to call himself the Junior Heavyweight Champion. Here we go! The athleticism! Oh! oh crushing a beautiful face of Adam Cole! And that's the time he needs fought. Unfortunately, Cole has worked over the body of Fox, and Fox wasn't able to immediately capitalize. DJ Hyde is firmly behind AR Fox. A.R. Fox is a man that many people wrote on early on in his career here in CZW. Now what are we, a year or so later since Six, debut? 15 since, months. Since, yeah, since his debut, and look at that. And now, main eventing, and now DJ Oh, oh no! What a Larian pump What a Larian, not to spit right out of his mouth. There it is, the Ace of Crusher scores again. A stunner right there. And here we are a year later, and DJ Hyde is oh, ring my for A.R. Fox to win the CZW Junior yeah. Heavyweight Championship. That's Why does he want a man like Fox to represent the division when he already has Adam Cole? Because A.R. Fox is the most spectacular wrestler possible in the entire wrestling business. He's a people's yeah. choice. Oh, that's an ugly driver. Drove that, could the mat. that could be it. One, two, and oh, kick out after two. AR Fox, the people's choice, and it's been the people of CZW that has kept AR Fox pretty much have a career here in CZW. And now, in the main event, proving why he deserves the main event, it's AR Fox's pure athleticism and pure drive to win and pure drive to be champion. But he was cut off by the resourceful goal, no way! I think Springboard perhaps. Yes, it is. Drop kick right in the bush. 
Adam Cole Thanks. goes outside, but you know what? I don't think he's safe there. Yeah. You know, in most cases, that they would be smart. No, no limits. Fox is going to fly, but Cole's going to dodge it. Oh, he caught himself. Oh! Here we go. No, no, no. Oh, yes! He's got Got the knees up. That huge lung bower. And it was a kick. Oh, two count only. A.R. Fox went for that fall away turn up with style. Ace Crusher and Adam Cole studying his tape, got the knees up. Hey, Cole's on the receiving end of that twice now. For the third time, he was going to be able to catch the international sex symbol with it. Adam Cole now back on the attack. <laughs> Setting up that panel City crash for Fox. Fox is able to fight out of it. Misses with the kick. He got it there. Oh, Knocked him out. Ducks it up. There it is. That time, that time he sent the champion face first. All the way, Ace One, Crusher. Two, and we have it all. Oh, I thought we had a new CZW Junior Heavyweight Champion right there. And we were so close to the one year of glory that Adam Cole has given us as CZW Junior Heavyweight Champion slipping away. They are Fox. Got a second win here. And the crowd have non-stop been chanting for AR Fox. They absolutely do not want Adam Cole to walk away with the gold here tonight at Proving Grounds. AR Fox averted that superplex. Adam Cole now could be setting up for that move we've seen so many times before. The, the Panama City Sunrise, I think. Too much time. And AR Fox capitalizes on that. AR Fox now. Eyeing him up. He told me he was going to bring the new in this match. What do we got right here? Up he goes. The line! Holy crap! Flint leg and spin is flying over! What? Oh my god! One of the most spectacular moves I've ever seen. The low main pain debuted here tonight. The biggest match possible in AR Fox's career. Have we ever been closer no, to seeing a champion lose his title? That is what Adam Cole's all about, though. He will deep, reach deep down to himself to make sure he leaves champion. Back up top. Look how familiar he is up there. Oh! And look how familiar oh. that is. The second time Cole's used the knee to counter. Oh, no. Like it or not, all that is best. Oh, best. Oh, another long blow. Back in shoulder region. And two. Oh, most. AR Fox once again able to kick out. And you have to give credit to Adam Cole now as they're taking down the low main pain. And now he's bringing the pain to AR Fox with his Boston crab. He's targeted the back three times. The knees have ended up in the back of AR Fox. And now he's got a Boston crab sending the shots of pain up the body of AR Fox, who's itching from the ropes. There we go. We got the bottom rope. Let's go, AR Fox. And trying to show some uh, lack of bias here, but we're really, really pulling for AR Fox to get a big win right here, guys. Speak for yourself, Dandler. Oh, damn it. Shut up. Whoa! Oh. Out here and now. Right in front of him. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Christ. Oh, Jesus. Big kick to the head on his way out. Cut him off big time right there. And Adam Cole proving why he is best of the best. Ten. He has been able to, he's pretty much known what AR Fox has been playing each and every time AR Fox is taken to the sky. And look at Adam Cole now. Adam Cole is doing what he has to do to make sure he retains the championship. He's got a table right in front of us and he plans on putting AR Fox down despite what DJ Hyde wants. Cole knows that Hyde will not let Papa Giorgio disqualify him in a match like this. The main event of CCW Proving Grounds, Cole is going to use that to his advantage. I'm surprised Cole is setting up the hardware here. Cole is not one to get ultra violent. He'll do what he has to do. Oh God, I really don't like this at all, let me tell you. This is a scary, scary time right now. Table right beside us here. That was good. And I, uh, guys, I'm not going to lie. The minute they come over here, I am getting out of the way. You've already ran away a few times here tonight at Proving Grounds. They are Fox now, just struggling to get up. Adam Cole's taking way too much time here. He's setting up that table. table. No, he's making sure it's there where it needs to be. No, he knows what he wants to do. Adam Cole is very calculated with every move he makes. Calculated risks. 
That's why he's been champion for a year now. Now the table's right beside me at the moment. Adam Cole has got Aaron Fox on the ring apron. No. Yes. We, saw, we saw something similar teased this earlier tonight with Rich Swan as clone. They weren't able to do it. It did not end well. AR Fox able to fight out that. AR Fox wins it. Oh. He's blocked again. He's going for the kick flip, but Cole was able to reverse it. Oh. oh no. AR Fox got that crazy look in his eye. What? Oh my God. The table doesn't break, but the spirit and body of Adam Cole may have, and it's not stopped. AR Fox. And AR Fox. awesome. Get him anything he wants. Really? The crowd chanting, 
we won Zandy. You know what? I won Zandy back, and I never thought I would say that. What's going on here? Tonight. 